Yeah, his mum says, you reek and you need a shower. And I thought, that's the first line of this film I've really believed. Like, I genuinely <laughs> think that's true. <laughs> that he can pull off. That Ben can yeah. pull off. Yeah. <laughs> Looks like he needs a shower is very accurate about this actor all the time. Yeah. Yeah, yeah he's got that on one of his headshots. That's one of the, one of the characters he can be. <laughs> <laughs> Unshowered guy number, well, number two. But <laughs> yeah, right. Let's, let's not get greedy here. God awful movie. 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 Welcome back to the Gamcast, where each week we sample another selection from Christian cinema because it's all part of the plan. I'm your host, No Illusions, and sitting 950 miles to my immediate left is my good friend Heath Enright. Heath, welcome back. Kia! Doing karate. Punch. <laughs> kick. <laughs> kip up. Just so you know, I had to slightly reorient my room to keep you to my immediate left. Cool. Now, Eli is going to be unable to join us this week, but sitting one pond to my east is guest masochist and host of Be Reasonable, Michael Marshall Marsh. Welcome back. Hey, thanks for having me, guys. Always a pleasure to be here and to uh, subject myself to whatever it is you're making me watch this week. Good Lord, this was one. This was one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, this is a tough one. This is a <laughs> bit of a gauntlet. It's. A, I would say it's a movie. Sometimes it's not a movie. This right, is yeah. technically a movie. It's two thirds of a movie, maybe. It's maybe the first yeah. two thirds of a redemption arc, essentially. Okay, yeah, sure. right, right, exactly. So, but here's the, You're welcome. <laughs> here's the thing, though. It is definitely higher quality than a lot of the stuff that we do, but sometimes when you... It's like we reached Uncanny Valley. It's so close to a movie that it's disturbing that it isn't. Yeah. Right? Yeah. <laughs> so, all right, well, we've talked about it quite a bit here. Let's, let's tell the audience what it is. Tell us, Heath, what will we be breaking down today? We watched The Favorite. It's the story of a guy who had a traumatic brain injury from a car accident and wrote a movie about it way too soon, all by himself. <laughs> right after a traumatic brain injury, he wrote the script. Yeah. And Marsh, how bad was this movie? Well, if you love a good redemption story about the perils of toxic masculinity, but you always find yourself rooting for the toxic masculinity, you'll <laughs> love this movie. <laughs> This this movie is for people who thought Patrick Bateman was just a little too in touch with his emotions. Just a little too much. <laughs> and the thing is, so this this is the favorite. Mm. And and I, I want to point out, it's not the other movie called The Favorite, where Emma Stone and Rachel Weisz take turns having sex with Olivia Coleman. Yeah. At least I don't think it's that film. Or, although the blurb does say <laughs> modified for family viewing. So <laughs> if it is that film, they've really nailed that edit. They've absolutely smashed that edit. <laughs> I was really disappointed when I started looking at other people's notes and I was like, I'm watching the wrong movie. God damn yeah. it. <laughs> he finished. I finished. But yes. I think you were, you were watching the right movie. Yeah. He wanted to point out there's a favorite with a U too. That's a, that's the whole reason. Yeah, no, exactly. <laughs> you could hear the U. If you listen really carefully, listeners, you could actually hear me say the U. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So is there anything you guys want to nominate this one for being the best at being the worst at? Yeah. I'm going to go with best worst actor and character names as a <laughs> combination. So, mm -hmm. Matt Fahey plays the character of Luke Bernard in this movie. And the character of Benjamin Bernard is played by Luke Bernard, the <laughs> <Yes>. actor. <laughs> it, it's based on the story of the actor Luke Bernard, who was not convincing enough to win the role of himself in his own movie <laughs> that he wrote about himself. I think it, it's it's that, but it's it's even weirder. I think because his his full name is Luke Benjamin Bernard. Yes. Yeah, it's it is even worse. And I thought, is this gonna be like a Fight Club situation where like one half of him is facing off against the other half of him, and he's just sort of split himself down the middle? And yes, kind of. Yes, basically, yes. That happens almost. But it's like the opposite of that, though. Yeah, yeah. So I I was gonna go with best worst of violence. Okay, so <laughs> this is a movie about MMA fighting. There's a, a big car wreck at the at the heart of it, but it's Christian, so they don't want to have a bunch of blood and violence. And the compromise is that, like, we get to see the top half of Ground and Pound a lot and stuff like that. <laughs> the, the compromises are hilarious. We get to see Pound, but not Ground. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> Actually, just Ground. We switch it. We're doing Ground. Pound is bloody. 
I'm going to say uh, best worst improv because oh. constantly throughout this film, <laughs> the other actors are in scenes with Ben played by Luke Bernard and they'll be acting and they'll be riffing and he just gives them nothing back. <laughs> it's so rough. <laughs> They're just like playing, coming up with like little fun bits to do and little fun actions. And he's just confused and static and saying nothing. And it's, it's so hard to watch. It's so difficult. Hey, buddy. Do you want to just say yes and no? <laughs> <laughs> and <laughs> no and the thing is I it, it made me wonder whether the guy playing Ben Luke Bernard is even an actor and I ended up, ended up having to spend some time looking him up I got to mm-hmm. IMDB I got to his IMDB page apparently he's a trained actor I don't think particularly well or anything like that but on his IMDB page there's a bit of trivia which I thought it sheds a lot of light on this film and the trivia just says Luke lived in Nigeria until he was eight years old and when he left his best friend in Africa gave him a farewell gift he received a carved arrowhead. And when home in America, the arrowhead was quickly taken away from Luke since he was using it to kill birds. And <laughs> that explains everything about this film. It explains an awful lot. You can have it back at the end of the semester. It describes <laughs> this person so well. Yes. <laughs> All right, well, I'll tell you what. We're about to spend a couple hours making fun of a fully yoked MMA fighting sociopath who kills birds just to watch them die, apparently. So <laughs> we need a second to sort out our life insurance policies, etc. But we're going to be back in a minute with all the half-assery that is The Favorite. Hey, podcast listener, just cutting in with a quick update on Vulgarity for Charity, and I've got some good news, some better news, and some even better news. The good news is that we've already blown through that $100,000 match and raised over 125000 bucks for needy families all over the country. The better news is that our anonymous donors extended this match to include every penny we raised this year, and the even better than that news is that we've extended the fundraiser by five days, so instead of needing to get your donation in before Thanksgiving, you now have the whole weekend. Any donation that comes in by midnight on the 29th will be eligible for an on air air roast with the match that puts our overall total at over a quarter of a million bucks and we're within striking distance of the three hundred thousand dollars that we raised back in 2019 but to get there we still need your help just go to modestneeds.org make the biggest donation you can then email your receipt to vulgarity for charity at gmail.com along with the details on who you want roasted you'll find all the information on the show notes or by checking out scathingatheist.com thanks for all your help and thanks for once again overwhelming us with your generosity and now back to the show all right, everybody. Welcome to the first writer's room meeting for the favorite. Hooray! Huzzah! I'm the best. Oh, <laughs> thank me. Now, obviously, my story is a very impactful one, so we're going to need a really talented writer to pull it off. I think I should write it, Ben. Wow, really? You think I have enough experience and talent as a writer to do this? Hey, I did win that creative writing contest in third grade, did I not? Well, yeah, anywhere in the top five is technically winning. That is true. So I guess I, we all, yes, you, I did. Well, there I go. Wow, I am flattered. I'm flattered. Don't be flattered. I'm lucky to have me. Okay, so we'll obviously have to include that time dad forgot me at the water park. Yeah, to build sympathy, right? Exactly, exactly. And that time he didn't show up for my big MMA fight. Heartbreaking. Yeah, 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 definitely include that. And that time he didn't want help fixing the car. That's the day the voices first came. Sure was, sure was. Yeah, the voices came that day. That's correct. But man, I don't know where we'll find an actor with enough skill to portray such a deep and complex role. Ooh, I think I should do it. Really? You think you got the acting chops for that? (laughs) I remember that play in ninth grade, don't I? I was the only tree that swayed exactly on rhythm. I have very good rhythm. Exactly. You do have perfect rhythm. Wow. Well, if I think I'm good enough, I guess... We should do it. Please. I'm lucky to have me. I hope I'll do a nude scene. I feel like I can talk me into it. Am I leaning in? (laughs) (laughs) And we're back for the breakdown. And we're going to open up this one by breathing that, oh, it's the universal logo sigh of relief. (laughs) Right? Like, I mean, at least it's not going to be like a home movie lighting type of thing, but. Yeah, I was genuinely shocked to see the Universal logo at this point. I was like, wow, a Universal film. And then it was immediately followed by Light Bearer and Grey House films. I was like, oh, okay, yeah, Yeah. that's more like it. That's that's more like what we're expecting. (laughs) Yeah, you know what? Let's dwell on the professional lighting for a little while. (laughs) We're going to run out of positive right after that. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. So we get the inspired by true events. There's no asterisk or anything, which is bold. (laughs) Fucking bold. (laughs) And then we see a, a... 
crashless car crash. This the, the car crash, I, I think, is wonderful because it's not even like we don't see any of the cars crashing. They just sort of drive near each other, like they've sort of spooked each other, and that's that's enough, right? And, and that's all we see at this point. Listen, the important thing is an incident has incited a plot, Mark. Yeah, that's what's exactly. happening here. Exactly. They have a movie, and we see that be a fucking spy hunter cam. Yeah, yeah, like original GTA angle. Yeah, yeah right. exactly, exactly. <laughs> They chose some weird music for this too. It did not line up with what was happening at no, all. No. It didn't. It also, the way the song went, it, it seemed like it was kind of like a French pop song that was where they're speaking in English, but they've got all like the pronunciation and intonation just all wrong because they don't understand the words they're saying. That's what it kind of felt like. Yeah. Just all jarring. It was like Dawson's Creek took a little bit of cocaine. It was like, uh, <laughs> there like you go. Asian okay. bass Euro pop version of Dawson's Creek and they got all the syllables wrong. Yeah, absolutely. So, okay, so we get the car crash, we hear somebody calling for Luke, and then that fades into this kid at a, like a water park or something, like who's been forgotten slash abandoned, whatever, and he's calling for Luke and calling for his dad. He's just going, yeah. Luke, dad, for like eight minutes. Classic Amber Alert opening to a yes. movie. That's fun. Right. It took so long. It it took a while. Yeah. He just keeps saying, Luke, dad, Luke, dad, over and over again. And I thought either this kid has forgotten his lines or everyone <laughs> misunderstood how long it would take for the camera to pan in. It's just, just keep going till we give you this. It was really, are we this far away with the camera? We should have started closer. <laughs> So yeah, so the dad's going for Luke or his dad, and then we see John Schneider just hanging out, not hurting anyone, <laughs> doing his thing. John Schneider, oh, man, I, every time I'm reminded, like, oh, this this is somebody I know about, and I have like inside <laughs> jokes about. I'm, I'm very unhappy. It's fa- it's oh, I have no idea who this person is. Oh, he's the Dukes of Hazard guy. He's been in several of Gam's movies. Oh, he's, okay, he's like fair. a low level David A.R. White and that is rough now that right right yeah it. exactly he's like three levels below Kevin Sorbo <laughs> so, <laughs> and I love this opening he, like so he, he we see him and Luke and they're getting in a van he's like where's your brother and he's like that I probably he's near and he's like okay that's good enough because it's like a church trip he's like oh he's in the other van maybe and the dad's like yep eh, that's close enough all right well, let's go yeah well, I don't have kids. I think I'd be a lot clearer about where my kids were before you, I drove off. You'd hope so. <laughs> Once he didn't know where the kid is, he's like, well, I'm not going to turn the van around now. We're like halfway <laughs> back. I'm not, come on, don't be a dick about it, kid. Yeah. And he calls up his wife. He's like, honey, maybe kid lost. I don't know. And she's like, Ugh, all right, I don't know. I'll check it out. The parents are being way too cool about their abandoned child. They're just yeah. like, yeah, we'll figure it out. I don't know. Yeah, no, he's just like, hey, hon, forgot one of our kids again. Can you take care of that? And she's like, well, aren't you driving around right now and she's like well i don't want him to miss his soccer game <laughs> yeah and this this is ridiculous until you realize and it's exactly at this moment that the line screenplay by luke bernard comes up as they're showing you know luke is a bernard right on screen it's like, oh this is the guy who wrote that is the guy who's abandoned and he's trying to make out how utterly hard done to he was <laughs> right yeah that's why they're showing this ridiculous scene of his parents not caring Yep. yeah and mom's like all right i'm gonna finish the crossword i'm doing pretty good right now i'll get him though no, i'll fucking get him <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, oh, and then we also get this quick scene where like the bullies try to steal his DS. And and I guess the implication is that he fucked him right up. So this is we this is that scene. <laughs> is that the indication? I, I don't I think thought so. They beat him, him up. Yeah. I thought it was like, oh, when he then had to start looking after himself. But it's ambiguous. Because his parents were looking after him. Yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. No, look, we, we, when we see them again, when mom's picking him up, the other kids are all beat to hell. Oh, I didn't know. Oh that. my God. Yes, Luke yes. Bernard put that in because he <laughs> yes. wants to, sh- to pretend that he beat up kids who tried to take his DS. Yes. Oh he my God. He clearly had his DS stolen and got beat up. A hundred percent. Yeah. He's rewriting fights he had as an eight year old. As an eight year right. old. Yes. Yep. It's amazing. <laughs> that might be the most pathetic thing we've ever covered on this show. <laughs> <laughs> Well, so far, Eddie. Anyway. And then I called timeout. I called timeout, and it was officially a timeout, so the punch of goals didn't count. And then later, the score changed when it was time in, and I won, technically. So, yeah, so then we, we cut over to the soccer game. We cut over to his brother Luke's soccer game, where Dad is cheering, like, go, Luke, you're my favorite son, you know. Oh, my God, and he's it's an old American guy trying to cheer for, like, soccer, the the ball kick, that field, that <laughs> soccer hit. He shouts, drive, 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 which is not an instruction I'm aware of in soccer, especially not to a kid who's not on the ball at the time. Like, where is that kid driving to or from? <laughs> drive over there and pick up your, your brother. I forgot him at the water park. 
I wrote in my notes here, Marsh is definitely getting super angry right now. I'm not oh, here yes. to see it, but that's happening. Yeah, 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 yeah. I absolutely, well, to be honest, I wasn't too angry because that is exactly what kids football looks like. Every single person on the pitch just chases the ball yes. around. <laughs> just, like yeah. it flies chasing Accurate. around a bit of meat on the end of a string or something. Just, just circles <laughs> after the ball. It's ridiculous. It's the swarm of 20 plus a goalie yeah. on either side. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Totally it. Completely it. <laughs> And then there's this little moment where poor little Ben, the the forgotten afterthought son, beats his high score on some game on his DS. And he's like, Dad, look, I I beat my high score. And the dad's like, I don't fucking care, man. I'm busy loving your brother right now. Nobody cares, man. Learn a sport if you want to be loved by me. You're the worst. (laughs) And seriously, this dynamic between dad and Ben happens for the rest of the movie. And it's the fucking Mm. greatest. Everybody hates him. As they should. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and it's, it's the greatest. It will pay off as well. In the reconciliation moment later in the uh, the film, it pays off in a lovely yeah. way as well. So yeah. Oh, doesn't it? No spoiler on that. To be clear, as they should, he's very hateable. Not because he likes DS and not sports, but that's the no. example here. To be he's clear, a bad guy. He's a bad guy all the way through this entire guy. film. Yes, absolutely. Okay, so and then we get a quick, incredibly useless scene, even by the standards of this film, where mom picks the kids up from school. And little Ben is like, Mom, I did better on math. I got a B. And Luke is like, I got all A's, you little piece of shit. <laughs> yeah, this this scene wound me up because she's picking the kids up from school. There's only two kids leaving that school. So what school <laughs> is this? Where the only people walking out of school is two children and then two very clearly adult women. So I guess it's like a one-to-one thing. But then Ben says... <laughs> really good faculty-student ratio, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's, it's a really prestigious school. But then Ben says, you know, it looks like my math tutoring's finally paid off. So this kid who's making out how hard done to he is, is getting like exclusive math tutoring the entire time. He's not that unloved. So yeah, my, my math is getting much better. And also I'm expositing at a 10th grade level at this point. So I'm really, really coming along. Dude, you got a B in math? What? There's You're the only kid in the class. What's the curve? You landed at right. B somehow? You suck. You're the worst. And he is. And then he punches his brother who got the all the A's. He punches yes. the report card. Yeah. Foreshadowing. Pin in that. <laughs> Right. So then, well, we speed cut to 10 years later and Ben is training to punch people at the punching people gym. Him and his training partner immediately start having the you're gay, no, you're gay conversation. Right. Oh, God. Well, they do. But this is the first moment of bad improv where his training partner is really sort of rolling with it, talking about how they're going to get him in like a sumo costume, have a little kind of sumo G string. And the other guy, Ben, has just got nothing. He's like, mm, yeah, yes, su- sumo is a thing they do. <laughs> and, OK, yes. just to be clear, it's it's worse than that. Mm. <laughs> the actor that this real allegedly real actor is acting with is an MMA fighter, not an actor. And he's oh, getting either. outacted in improv by an actual MMA fighter. They got. <laughs> That's what's happening I did not know in that. real I reality. Did not know that. <laughs> I'm pretty I'm sure this is Uriah Hall. Yeah. So, yeah. So they, they talk about how gay they're not. And then there's this one guy in the in the gym who steps into the ring and he's like, which of you motherfuckers will fight me? I'll fight any motherfucker in here. You know, like happens at gyms. It's so weird. <laughs> Somebody fight me. It's meant to be a real gym. That's not how real gyms work. There's, there's no version of a real gym that involves just shouting at the top of your lungs. Someone come be punched by me. Okay, well, this is Grady's MMA. Not Gracie's, but Grady's <laughs> yeah, MMA. No. <laughs> yeah, it's a real almost sounding gym. So, yeah, so that guy challenges one dude to a fight, and then that dude loses so that Ben can go in and have his, like, proving scene. But, of course, it's a Christian movie, so we don't get to see the violence, really. Yeah, we, d- we just cut away, and we cut back to the guy who's been beaten up, who's called Tank, apparently. <laughs> He's in it for like two seconds. Yeah, I'll fight you. Cut away. Tanks on the floor being punched. Okay. Well, I, I just wanted to watch how that fight played out because it's literally like a two second fight. Mm-hmm. So Tank must have just sort of like ran at him. Or something. I don't know because he's just instantly and then fallen down. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I slid. I slid. Tank just trips on his own foot and falls on his face. <laughs> Knocked out. So yeah, but but Ben sure kicks that guy's ass so much so that they have to pull him off of the guy because he's too badass or just an asshole who's taking things too seriously. Yeah, like, and all the way through this film, whenever he gets, first of all, his only move in this entire film is get someone on the floor and start punching the fuck out of their head. Mm-hmm. And 
every single time he does it, someone has to pull him off and pull him away at the end because he's going to carry on punching the guy in the face long after the fight is over, which is evidence that he's the bad guy in any right? film. That's what the bad guy does. Yes. Yeah. Takes out an assault rifle, goes to Kenosha. Fuck this oh, guy. Jesus <laughs> Christ. Yeah. Yeah, but like, yeah, so he it gets off of me. We have a, a couple more. You have a vagina. No, you have a vagina insults. This is also where we introduce his rival MMA fighter, Michael, who trains at the same gym as him. Yeah, which just made me think, is this gym just a line of men, like, insisting somebody fight them? Like, when it stays on? <laughs> yes, it is. That's what it, that's what it appears to be. Tank gets beaten up, the next guy who beats him gets beaten by Ben, then Venom, his Michael Venom, whatever, <laughs> is trying to fight Ben afterwards. It's just like, when it stays on in the gym. Oh, yeah, there you go. <laughs> Show us that line of, like, 12 other guys just being like, oh, I hope they hurry up. It's gonna take know, we're just, forever. I mean, we're 11th and 12th. Luckily, Tank only lasted two seconds. That was quicker than I thought, but man. Yeah, it's like a pool table in the bar. You can't see that the Men who to put like their quarter down on the side of the ring <laughs> just to reserve their place. Can we get some folding chairs for this area? I don't know. <laughs> so, but the boss sees Ben and Michael jawing at each other and he says, Hey, I need to talk to you two in my office. Right. So, this is where we meet the boss of the gym, Tyrone Woodley, also a real MMA fighter. Sure, sure wasn't an actor. <laughs> <laughs> no. No. But yeah, so apparently he's got Ben, um, the rival, a fight. But he didn't get one for Ben. And the way they allocate fights in this gym is to give the person a copy of the poster, I think, because he just hands them the poster, yeah. which was very <laughs> clearly designed using word clip art. Yeah. You know, it's uh. Comic Sans. It's got that kind of shadow effect on the font. You know, a couple of little bears or hearts or whatever. And he just hands them the poster as a way of booking the fight. And I feel like you'd have a more formal system than sort of his just to copy the poster I've pulled down off the, off the notice board. Is this the ticket? Is there a QR? There's not a QR code. What, do I just go up to them and hand them this? Or maybe it's like one of those things where it's got the phone number on little tear-off tags if you want to fight, <laughs> take this, call this number. Oh, there you go. Is this a real gym or not? <laughs> so, and then we, this is hilarious. Okay, so we cut over to Dad, and Dad is now at Luke's soccer practice. This is 10 years older, Luke. And he's cheering him on. And I know this isn't what they're going for, but it plays like Luke has just been in this same game of soccer for 10 <laughs> fucking years. And Dad has just gotten a decade older cheering for him the whole time. No, it's still 0-0. Zero, zero. That's soccer yeah. for you. There you go. <laughs> Cool. Something's going to happen. This was the football scene that really, really pissed me off. The kids one I can understand. This one pissed me off. First of all, they try and make Luke look like this incredibly skillful player. So he, he sells the defender like a Marseille roulette, this kind of 360 spin. But it's the slowest and most signposted spin I have ever seen. He basically points his way through exactly where he's going to be at any time. I'm going to press the R stick now and do a circle yeah, exactly. with it. <laughs> but why is his dad there? Right. His dad going along to his kids' soccer practice makes sense. But when his, his son is like a grown adult who just presumably is playing for a team now, why are you turning up at training to cheer? It's fucking weird. That doesn't happen. <laughs> well, I guess apparently he didn't want to be outdone by Hoovy's dad. It would be damn if Patrick Warburton's <laughs> going to beat me. But yeah, apparently. And then <laughs> we get the, um, the scout comes to see him after practice, right? <laughs> Oh God! Oh, this this, this is, is so this is the best. so infuriating. This is how this works, right? This is how scouts work, right? Yeah, <laughs> Real Salt Lake is scouting him here, and mm -hmm. uh, apparently, it is every soccer player's dream to play in the <laughs> soccer mecca of Utah. <laughs> Marsh, yeah, <laughs> thoughts? Is that correct? Absolutely. In the world of football, absolutely. 100%. Sorry, I didn't say nil nil earlier. By the way, go ahead. <laughs> But like, so he's being scouted by this scout. And when this guy comes up, he's like, I'm from real Salt Lakes. Uh, uh, you know, and he says, Oh, I watched you in the cup is what uh, Luke says to him. And I looked it up. The only time they've won the cup was the 2009 MLS cup. That's the only thing they've ever won in all of real Salt Lakes history. So this film was made in 2019. So he's saying, Oh yeah, I watched you win the cup. 10 years, a full <laughs> decade ago. Rather than, oh yeah, I know who you are because you play in the league of the, the sport league, that yeah, I exactly. play. Because yep. you do the thing that I'm currently that doing. <laughs> <laughs> and I've never been scouted by a professional football scout. I'm pretty certain it isn't that they turn up to one training session, walk over to you and say, hi, I like you, here's my card, consider yourself scouted, and then walk off again. Oh, and give them a hat. He gives them a hat, he so gives that makes the deal, I guess. Yeah. yeah uh -huh. Do you like me? Yes. No, Real Salt Lake. <laughs> I love that they pronounce it Real. 
Isn't that, that's just Spanish for royal. And they were like, Real yeah. Madrid's the name of a real football team. Well, that's our, it's just, it's Real Salt Lake now. There you go. So just in case you haven't yet caught on to the concept of dad loving Luke more than he loves Ben, we get another scene where Ben is showing up at the house and Luke is telling him about how dad loves him more than he loves Ben. <laughs> yep. Also, Luke's pissed off that Benjamin wasn't at his soccer practice. Why would your brother turn up to your training if you're a football player? Why do you expect your family to be there? It's so weird. At every practice? We did a really good one-touch drill. I was awesome in it. You're an asshole. This is also where we introduced the barn find barracuda, right? So Luke has found this old car that he wants to fix up with dad, but Ben doesn't have a car that he wants to fix up with dad. It's just, again, they are spoon-feeding us this this premise. <laughs> Yeah, I had no idea what a Plymouth Barracuda was, so I didn't know what to expect at any point as a working thing. But they think it's really impressive because they shoot this whole scene like it's the before scene of American Pickers. You know, it's this yeah, kind right. of mm -hmm. whole <laughs> lots of angles of how rough it is. And I expected like a voiceover to start saying what work needed to be done and how much they got it for. <laughs> <laughs> but everything about this film so far, it was just kind of cars, cage fighting, American rock music, toxic masculinity. I just have zero interest in this film at this point. Yeah. I, you are, if you weren't forcing me to watch this, I would have turned off at this point. <laughs> I'm surprised you would have made it that long. Okay. <laughs> so then we cut to some fucking, I, the talent show that I'm so confused as to everyone's age in this movie, right? Mm, How yes. old yeah. are any of them supposed to be? They all live at home, but they're all in high school, but they're all in college, but they're all in their 30s. I don't know. But at any rate, so we go to the talent show where Ben's girlfriend is going to be doing her, her dance performance. God, we actually watch an amateur dance recital for a grown-up? Again, yeah. I, <laughs> is it? I'm not sure what age we're talking about. Is it a grown-up? I have no idea. I have genuinely no idea what this is. First of all, his girlfriend being played by like a store brand, Lindsay Lohan, which mm -hmm. is really impressive because Lindsay Lohan has spent most of her career trying to be a store brand, Lindsay Lohan. <laughs> and somehow this film still sort of undercuts that. Oh, uh, I had her. I thought I thought she was more of a Jennifer Lawrence. I had her as Jennifer Florence in my notes, actually. <laughs> oh, nice. Nice. I had her as the college girl from The Reliant with Kevin Sorbo. She was done. <laughs> oh, that's right. <laughs> yeah. I recognize all of them now. It's really getting sad. <laughs> <laughs> she tries to flirt with Ben because she's an actor, but he's just not able to do it. And so she just visibly <laughs> struggles trying to flirt with this impassive brick wall of a confused man. Oh, it's it's so rough. It's just one of the... I have flowers. All right, man. Oh. Just look, cut. cut. <laughs> oh, it's bad. So he explains that he's jealous because another man has has touched her. She seems to think that's charming. It's not. It's a fucking red flag. Yep. Everything he does is a red flag. And yet he still comes away supposed to be being the hero of this film. Yeah. So and then we watch her dance and I wrote on my in my notes. I bet this part is only seven seconds long on the pure flicks cut. <laughs> <laughs> She's very flexible. Actually, it, it was surprising how much of it they left. It almost got me back on board from from leaving from the toxic masculinity. How much <laughs> of this they left they left in. <laughs> so and then. OK, so the talent show i guess or whatever is over way too many applause at the end of this by the way mm. just yeah. the whole crowd goes nuts their life is a goddamn nightmare it's going to go, i have to watch this is, is this relationships you have to go watch amateur dance recite is that what normies do i've never had to go watch an amateur dance recital god no no I, i've never had to do that so all right so but they're waiting for her afterwards it turns out that luke the good brother got engaged to his girlfriend this very night. And we, we established that the fiancé is Ben's girlfriend's best friend. Now, we established that because when she comes out after the talent show, the fiancé gives her a necklace that says best friends forever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Show don't tell. Perfect bit of writing. <laughs> Good stuff. Yeah, and then they, they squeal and you can tell that neither of the actresses wanted to do that fucking <laughs> bit. Hey, we'll squeal if you give us names. They were like, no, just squeal now. And <laughs> I actually wrote down, Luke got engaged to unnamed woman number two. Great. <laughs> I'm going to call her Becky Dell. We'll see how that goes. <laughs> <laughs> Spoiler, I was so happy when I found this out. Her actual name is Rebecca. Yes, yeah, yeah. You nailed it. Rebecca Dell, yeah. 
And again, what's Ben's reaction to this? Ben, the hero of this film, his reaction to finding out his brother just got engaged that very night, just it, uh, right in the moment he's engaged, he says, oh, that's a ball and chain. It's like, fuck, you're such a prick. Yeah, such worst. a prick. How are we meant to like you? Right, right. Yeah, and of course, just like everything else in the in the movie, Ben makes it all about him. He's like, oh, well, my girlfriend was supposed to be about my girlfriend tonight, you fucking dick. <laughs> so, okay, so they decide to go out on a double date to celebrate the engagement. And as they're driving along, this is when Luke tells him that he's going to go pro. The Real Salt Lake um, <laughs> scout gave him a hat and everything. But then Luke is ribbing him. He's like, yeah, you know, I'm better than you in every possible way. And then we get the car wreck from the beginning. Yes. And the car crash is basically that the cars decide, and not even that quickly, to switch the lanes that they're driving in. So they switch <laughs> yes. onto the other lane, and the car in front of them switches onto the lane that they were in. And it's basically like that time in the 60s in Sweden where they changed driving from the left to the right overnight. <laughs> it was, you know, September 3rd, 1967. They did that? Yeah, yeah, it genuinely happened. It was called H Day. How'd that go? Did it work out really well? Yeah, it did. It did. At full, I, I looked this up. For the purpose of making this joke, I looked up the details of it. It's really interesting. <laughs> At 4.50 a.m., there was a, like a, a, a sort of klaxon and everyone was told to stop and all the traffic ground to a halt. And then everyone had to slowly m- make their way to the opposite lane. And then at five o'clock, there was like all the bells would ring and then they just crack on and, and carry on from there. So it was just literally in a 10 minute window, they had to to sort that traffic jam out. And then they were just on the other side of the road from then on. And it H day, they call it. God, if you did that in, in modern day America, you know that the right would just stay on the right side of the road, right? And they would just be like, <laughs> no, I'm driving. It's my freedom to use this side of the road. Yeah. <laughs> Left directional is a hoax. <laughs> <laughs> what? All right. So, but we've had the wreck now. We're outside of the wreck. Ben was thrown from the car and he's looking, he's calling for Luke like he was in the beginning. And Ashley's all fucked up. The ambulances show up. And the thing is, the the car they're in has flipped and is upside down. They were nowhere near driving fast enough to flip the car. I don't think they were fast enough to, like, bump the bumper if they crashed into a tree. Right. But somehow the car is upside down, and he's been thrown... He's the only one thrown entirely from the car and basically doesn't have a scratch on him. Yeah. Well, he did a dive roll, and he's fine because he knows <laughs> he, he, he actually beat up that tree when it tried to hit him and take his DS. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, so, so we go to the hospital post-rec, Mom and dad show up. The doctor's like, I'm sorry to tell you, your crappy son is fine, but your good son's brain is all fucked up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which is like good news and bad news. You hate Luke, right? So I guess, <laughs> you know, it's uh, it's hard to say what the news is good or bad. Yeah, it, it, he's fucked up. He's got a, you know, his brain's an expanding bag of blood. Ah, uh, not sure why I would tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> all right. That's weird. And I've got to say, the the hospital, I, the only time I've ever seen a hospital this empty was on an anti-vaxxer's TikTok. You know, it's like, oh, the, the nurses are dancing, <laughs> the, the hospitals are empty. <laughs> yeah, and so, and of course, it's a Christian movie, so we have to have the doctor come in and go, eh, what are you going to do? He's going to live, he's going to die, probably going to die. Anyway, we'll talk to you later. And then the chaplain shows up and he's like, I would like to spend some time with you and be very, very thoughtful and nice and, and everything. And it's just like, yeah, it's because you ain't got nothing else to do, though, man. You're just... <laughs> that's all you're there for and yeah. it's the dad who lead, leads the prayer and it's great because he sort of goes father we pray that you please don't take Luke home like he was checking his notes or reminding him what they, <laughs> what he wanted to be the outcome <laughs> like, <check. laughs> yeah right he's like alright whatever you do God don't just leave me with this half ass son I mean come on and Ben's pissed off that he, he doesn't get an early enough mention in the prayer. He storms off because he's like, well, I can't believe you're praying for Luke, the one who's currently in a coma. Why, why aren't you praying for me, the entirely unscathed one who stood right next to you? Yeah, right. <laughs> well, the thing is, is that honestly, Ben is such a, this actor that, that plays Ben is such a bad actor that you can never tell what he's supposed to be mad about, right? His facial expression never matches what he's supposed to be doing. Yes. And the closest he gets to acting or what he considers to be acting is to just occasionally stammer some of his sentences in a really unconvincing way because he's stammering and stuttering the wrong parts of the words. Right. Yes, um, exactly. So he, he, yeah, it's, it's amazing. <laughs> so, but so, of course, it's still act one. So Ben is like, you think your silly little prayers are going to help? And mom's like, you know that God answers prayer. And I'm like, well, and, and if you if you count no as an answer, <laughs> then sure. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> and this is also where we learned that the other passenger died. Rebecca. Yeah. <laughs> uh, apparently nobody prayed for her, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Nobody prayed for any of these people not to get into a car crash. I well, that's like. the problem. Yeah, they're, they're they're really getting to it after the fact. So we cut to Rebecca's funeral immediately after we learn that she dies. We get Ben like hanging at the periphery of the funeral because, you know, he's the main character. Dude, don't turn. The funeral is not about you. Yeah. You're not the most grieving. Fuck off. It's probably good it's not about him because, you know, maybe tuck your shirt into your jeans for the funeral. <laughs> I don't well, know. I, I I have a theory about this because yeah, he's hanging around in black shirt and shades and and jeans like an arsehole. But I thought, well, hang on, they bury them quick because we only just found out she's died. We've no idea how long it is after the funeral. I think the funeral was so fast that he just didn't have time to change outfits. He okay, couldn't, he couldn't go out and get a suit because like, oh, <laughs> we only just found out she's dead. We've got to bury her immediately, like she's a fucking vampire or something to come back. <laughs> <laughs> And again, he's trying to act like he's like upset, but his only way of acting upset is like looking down and then like trying to add two four digit numbers in his head is essentially <laughs> what he's doing. And I thought everyone around him is so much better at acting than he is. It's, it's like me in one of Eli's skits. It's like, Oh, okay. This, everyone's better at this than me. If I just, just keep my head down, no one will notice that. <laughs> or carry the nine. Are you carrying a nine? <laughs> so he's, he's such a bad actor that at this point I was, I wrote, Wait, is he supposed to want to fight the pastor giving the eulogy or what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, okay. So now we cut to a bar where he's with his MMA buddy that's going to never get a name or matter, but eventually turn out to be a traitor for no reason. It's all very weird and stupid. Yeah. And they're having this conversation. His, his buddy's saying, like, how's your brother doing? He says, oh, I don't want to talk about that. And instead of saying, like, okay, well, how about your girlfriend? How about your parents? How they're coping with the death of their daughter-in-law? He's like, no, um, let's talk about fighting stuff instead. Just straight into the fighting stuff. You know, perfect kind of uh, conversation there. <laughs> the barmaid turns up and she's like, hello. And his friend just immediately starts spilling the guy's entire family story. He just gives him everything about <laughs> yeah. Ben. And like every single time his friend talks, more of Ben's personal information just falls out of him. Like he's Jim Carrey and liar, liar. <laughs> <laughs> his brother just got smooshed by a car. <laughs> Sorry, sorry. He's having doubts about religion and thinks that prayer is useless and stupid. <laughs> His father hates him because he's the worst. <laughs> <laughs> Forgot him at a water park one time when he was eight. He got his DS <laughs> stolen. He did not beat up those kids. <laughs> And then the bartender decides that she wants to be a character as well. So she comes up with the most <laughs> ridiculous, stupid, senseless fucking sobriety chip bet. Thing. What happened here? Okay. Yeah. She says she hears about this tragedy and she's like, all right, well, you know, prayer is pretty powerful. Let's test praying scientifically. And then she takes out a, a fishbowl full of AA chips that she collects. Yeah. Why does she collect those? From lapsed alcoholics that she saves. Yeah. You can just not serve people. If you don't want to serve, you can just not eat. Oh, oh, oh. You know, not ask about their AA status either. I, but at first, I assumed that this was just like the stamps on the side of her biplane, and I loved this character, but no. No, no. she's disappointed in them. Okay, so th this, is all, this all happens. I have no idea what it means, though. She says, all right, she takes out some of the AA chips, and she's like, okay, you take these. If your brother is alive in six months, you get free dinner here. That's not, that's nothing. They're, they're treating it like there's a bet here. And he's like, yeah, fine. Bet's on. That's a bet. No, it isn't. What bet? What is the bet? What does she get out of this? If the brother dies, does he have to buy her dinner? <laughs> yeah. Is oh, he God, like the that. atheist betting against her in somehow? And they were like, chips are betting. So we'll have chips. I, I don't know. Oh, God, I, I hope it's that. I hope it's that she just bets anybody who comes in whose brother's been in a car accident and she's just really across <laughs> the actuarial table of your chances <laughs> of surviving a car accident if you if, if the driver was a young male. He said, no, honestly, this pays out way more often than I pay out. This is, this is a banker, guys. So, so now we cut to 11 days after the accident. We're still at the hospital and Luke is finally starting to stir. His eyes are open-ish. Oh. We just montaged to 11 days after the accident. Mm -hmm. We buried the Hispanic fiance in that time and that didn't even get a montage. So presumably the time between the funeral <laughs> right. and now is montage worthy. So it's longer. So how did they bury her the next day? She died and just wow. bang, instantly in the ground. <laughs> That's fucked up. I didn't even think about that. And maybe she was also thrown from the car just into a hole. And she's like, well, she's right here. I mean, we, we, <laughs> we could go through the process oh, you know it into the hospital and taking it back. This, uh... This is a freebie, so that doesn't usually happen. <laughs> kind of meant to, meant to be. 
I love to. So he starts blinking. Luke starts to blink. And mom's like, oh, my God, the Lord has answered our prayers. And I'm like, you prayed that a week and a half later he would regain nominal eyelid function? <laughs> the, uh, step up your praying, lady. Dad, immediately, he sees the eyes open slightly, and he's like, eyes are opening. God, God, I called it. This is God. This is God. <laughs> yep. I God did this. Fuck you, doctor. You had nothing to do with this. <laughs> What's lovely as well is Luke just blinking is out acting Ben. Ben is the worst actor ever committed to film. <laughs> and Luke is. moving one eyelid out acts him. It's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> and they actually cut over to Ben here and he he's like, yeah, great job coming out of the coma, whatever. I And he, you watch him be confused. He's doing math in his head again. Mm. And he's like, he holds up, <laughs> he holds up the AA chip. And he's like, I think I just lost a bet that doesn't make sense. I don't know what I do. <laughs> do I have to give her these chips back and buy her a dinner at her restaurant? I don't know what happened. Maybe he's not a bad actor. Maybe the character in, in the universe of this film is just continually confused from this moment on as to what bet he's signed up to. And so he's just <laughs> and that's trying fair. to sort that what out. That? It was it's just, yeah, whenever he, whenever he has a moment, he just drifts back off to what, what was going on there? I, I, it's so strange. <laughs> Can I raise right now? It feels like chips. <laughs> Six month chip. Boom. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so in case you hadn't gotten the impression yet that Luke is actually dad's favorite son, not Ben, we're going to have another scene dedicated to that. So we head back home. Ben is working on that old barn find of Luke's. And the dad is like, yeah, man, I'm not really in the mood to rebuild my dying son's car while my son is still fighting for his life. And Ben is like, you don't love me. I know. I get it. I get it. <laughs> yeah, it's entirely reasonable. I can't focus on fixing this car up while my son is still in a, in a coma or maybe on his deathbed. And Ben treats this like it's the biggest rejection of all time. Just have some fucking compassion for someone who isn't you. Other people have rich inner lives. The world exists outside of your own, your own mind, Ben. Right. Right. If he wasn't the goddamn villain of the film, he'd recognize that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> He's so shitty. And then he goes, well, okay, dad, uh, you don't want to work on a cart. Would you like to come to my MMA fight tonight? And the dad's like, nah, not, not particularly. Not. I would meow. <laughs> I love spending time with you just now. Just, this, just was, this counts. Spend I feel like we did. Time. We've, we've seen each other a lot in the last 20 years, right? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we, we just need a little space. So then we cut to Ben's fight that night. He's he's fighting very well. Yep, he's pushed the guy on the floor. He's punching him in the face. All the moves, all of the MMA moves. Yep, yeah, right exactly. <laughs> exactly. And he does so well that the manager's like, oh, yeah, no, now you're ready for the big time. And I thought, what about this fight prepared him from the big time more than the other times he's pushed people to the floor and punched him in the face? Right. Like, <laughs> is it like you've got to do it six times? Yeah, you've been you six times, <laughs> check the stamp, bang, loyalty card, in you go. It's like XP or something, right? Uh, yeah. You know what? Really quick, break this piece of wood. Yep, okay, now All you're right. a professional. So, uh, there you what go. do you know? <laughs> All right, well, I'll tell you what. One character just walked up to another and said, trust me, we're going somewhere with this. So I think that means act Liar. two is over and we get to take a break, but we're going to be back in a flash with even more of The Favorites. Hey, Heath, how's the uh, Christmas shopping going? It's pretty good, I guess, but I have no idea what to get for Anna. Mm. Yeah, it's tricky. What do you get for the person who has to listen to Eli's desperate bids for attention when he's not podcasting. Right. That, oh, man, that's got to be exhausting for her. Oh, is this a Raycon ad? I think it's a Raycon ad, right? It sure is. With seamless Bluetooth pairing and a comfortable noise-isolating fit, you can start listening right now and keep listening for hours. Yeah, Raycon offers eight hours of playtime with a 32-hour battery life, which will get you all the way through Eli's Starbucks order with a little bit of time to spare. A little bit, yeah, sure. Look, look, I've been using Raycon earbuds for years now, and I'm hard on my headphones, but even after dozens of audiobooks and hundreds of podcasts, they still sound as good as the day I got them. There's even a built-in microphone so you can take calls on your earbuds at the press of a button or pretend to when somebody you're ignoring tries to get your attention, Anna. That's right. So this holiday season, get them something they could use for calls or music for work or for play at home or on the go or maybe just pick up a pair for yourself trust me you're going to use them every day to get your raycons just go to buyraycon.com slash gam today to unlock exclusive deals up to 20 percent off your raycon order but hurry the offer is available for a limited time only and you don't want to miss it that's buyraycon.com slash gam to unlock up to 20 percent off your raycons buyraycon.com slash gam all right so it looks like you crossed that one off your list um 
What are you going to get for Lucinda? Oh, uh, are we doing back-to-back Raycon ads? Uh, no. I don't know. I don't even know what I asked. I just uh, unrelated. Ari, which one of you weak little pansies is ready to fight me, huh? I thought this was a real gym, but you guys look like a bunch of um, fucking cowards uh, to me. Sir, sir Oh, thing. you ready to take me on? Bring it on, motherfucker. Uh, hundred no, bucks. No, no I, I am not bringing it in any way, sir. I'm um, just, um, look, you're starting to scare our customers. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought this was a real gym. It, yeah, it, it's a real gym, sir. And um, the thing is, you're really starting to scare the Pilates class. They, don't, they should be scared. I could kick their asses. Sure, all yeah, of them. Uh, yep, you could. It's, um, it's a class for senior citizens. So. Yeah, I never would have yeah. made it to senior citizen age if, if, if they had to step in the ring with me. Well, that's not. Because I, I had I killed like, them. I'd have no, fucking okay, k- yeah, killed them. I, I, I get where you're going. That's I'd not, rip out their uh, spines and then okay. shove them up their asses. That's uh, that's very vivid. Um, Yeah, well, one way or the other, if you're not going to use that elliptical machine, you need to get off it and let somebody else use it. No, they have to fight me for it. No, no, sir, they do not. Arm wrestle? Nope. Rochambeau? No. I'm going to have to ask you to leave. You sound just like the people at Wendy's. <laughs> Rock beat scissors, man. <laughs> And we're back for more of this shit, and we're going to rejoin Ben at the hospital, wishing that Luke would hurry the fuck up with his slow-ass <laughs> bullshit recovery. Technically, Luke is shitty at coma recovery. Maybe he's not <laughs> good at everything, and I'm better at something. I didn't, I, I'm didn't. i way better at surviving car accidents. I'm better at not being in comas. There you go. <laughs> and they're like, not the time, Ben. Nobody likes you. Still, nobody likes you. Stop. <laughs> They're sort of describing his recovery like he just needs to stay awake a little bit longer every day. Like it's it's a binary thing. You're either in a coma or, or not. And right. This is, you know, <laughs> your, your recovery is how much of the day you spend in a coma. <laughs> yeah. And so the doctor comes in and he's just like, they're like, ah, oh, he's been staying awake longer and longer. And of course, it's, it's a fucking Christian movie doctor. So he's got to be like, nah, whatever. <laughs> and the doctor says, well, I think we need to give him a tracheotomy. Mom starts fighting with the doctor over this this actually happens he's like uh we'd like to do a little bit more medical science no we said one doctor thing and then god that's it you got your one right eventually they do wheel him off for the tracheotomy but mom fights it the whole way like they're taking him into auschwitz (laughs) and even dad is like honey maybe we do praying and medicine i don't know just like to uh, as a gesture to the the medicine people let them think they're involved like shake and bake but like we know what's happening (laughs) And then the movie, I love it when this happens. The movie forgets that we had an 11 day time cut. So we cut to Ashley just getting home from the hospital. Apparently she's been in the hospital for 11 days over her broken ankle. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, and her ruptured spleen, which I thought was weird that she managed to rupture her spleen in a car accident without breaking any ribs. So it just kind of, I don't know if it was like a vibrational rupture, <laughs> but. They haven't looked into what typically ruptures spleens in car accidents because it's it's normally broken ribs, I think. Ben did a special karate punch on her in the chest area. <laughs> I also love that she, he's made her a banner. He's got a, a banner across the, the 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 room as she comes in to welcome her home, and the the welcome home sign has the word "dance" on it as a reminder of what she'll never do again. Yeah, right. <laughs> oh, yeah. So you know that thing that you that you love that you may never do again. It's got that on it as well. Uh, how about that? <laughs> and then so they go upstairs and. Ben's like, so you're back home. Should we maybe fuck a little? We could read we could the room, fuck. Ben. You're the fucking worst, man. <laughs> Jesus. Oh, it's so creepy. And it thinks it's such a creepy and gross scene. And I don't know that it was meant to be. I think it's just him. Yes, I think you're right. I think it's impossible for him to do it in a way that isn't creepy and gross. You're right. He's just, he comes in and he's like, yeah, I never fucked the spleenless chick before. <laughs> I didn't. Uh, and, and she's like, no, I'm not going to fuck you. You have to go to church with me. He's like, and, th- and then, and then we fuck. It, well, what she says is, Ben, you've got to take me out. And she was delivering it like she was asking for euthanasia. It's like, I know you've got a broken leg, but you, you're not a horse. <laughs> I could still, you could make some very good glue out of me yet. <laughs> we'll put you out to seed. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, but she's like, you got to go to church with me. So we immediately cut to church. And he's like, okay, I'll go to church, but I'm not going to love Jesus while I'm there. So we get the sermon and we get him like he's nodding off. He's checking his phone. He doesn't give a shit about this God stuff. It's quite a big room. And I thought, I bet this is the same room that the dance recital was in. They just put a different curtain. Oh, wow. Because it's the same kind of layout. I bet that's what it is. They've got one room. We'll, (laughs) we'll, We'll use that. Yep. And this is the second time we get a sermon where like, 
the mo- they wrote this. They're, he's Christian, but the sermon like accidentally does the problem of evil thing. Right. Because the guy's like, all right, well, we believe the Bernard family, God, that that amazing car crash you did. Great, mysterious way. Totally get it. Amazing. <laughs> or we don't get it, but it's great. It's great. We're just totally great. But please also fix it. And <laughs> that they can't do a better job of writing. that. Just skip that. The movie on and on. Like this was the second of several more times. They keep bumping into the problem of evil and then like like a Roomba and having to like turn around for a minute and cut. And be like, this is, fuck, I'm skipped, got hit by this. There's a carpet here. The line about them in the prayer, it's, they actually have the line, as you say, we agree with the Bernard family. And I thought, that's a really weird line in your prayer to God, unless it's like you're all, you've clubbed together to come to God to ask for something. And you don't, you, not one of you wants to be the person who leads the request. Like, no, look, we've all had a chat and uh, we all agree. <laughs> Everyone we thinks. all agree that you should sort this out, God. <laughs> oh, God. I wanted him to be like, we, we all agree with Ber- the Bernard family. Ben is nowhere near as good as Luke. <laughs> <laughs> but then we do a, an even more meaningless time cut here, right? We cut four days after the tracheotomy <laughs> surgery, and th- this scene is just amazing. It's just, <laughs> it's just the dad going like, "All right, this is fucking. We are, we are over a third of the way through the goddamn movie, Luke. Hmm. Get up." Oh, it's the best. He's just panicking, like, "Wake the fuck up, Luke. Wake up now." Go- ah. It's like prayer doesn't even work. No, I will not keep my voice down. What the hell? God, fuck you. What am I, a fucking atheist? Wake up, my son, now, God. It's the greatest. Yeah, I wrote in my notes. Have you tried asking him a few more times to wake up? Because that, that'll probably do yes. it. It's, it's the number, I think, is the sweet spot. Just keep going. Oh, and that's it. I need a strongly worded letter to God, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> and then, okay, this is fucking bizarre to me too we have the moment where mom and dad go ape shit about those damn doctors constantly giving drugs to luke again yeah again the, the nurse the nurse comes in and is like all right i'm gonna put uh administer some some medicine that the doctor told me to <laughs> they're like nurse we decided we're gonna stop using medicine their first objection's so weird. They say he doesn't even drink. It's like they're not trying to help him get buzzed. They're trying to fix him. <laughs> that's yeah, not kid idiots. what's happening now. No. Yes. This is not recreational morphine, you stupid fuck. No. <laughs> but the nurse is like, you want me to stop administering the med- No? I mean, okay, <laughs> I, I guess I'll ask the doctor. No, we're not. Do- and then <laughs> she has to like fake go ask the doctor if we can stop doing medical science right look in the back and see if they have no no any no drugs for him and do like make hand gestures in the other room with the doctor but not be saying anything like (laughs) now you make a gesture back and it'll look like we're having a real conversation (laughs) (laughs) yeah i don't know what the fuck this scene was doing but yeah it's it's, you know ben is sick and tired all this shit it's boring to watch him try to blink and, and and fail and mom says, don't worry, Ben, we've got thousands of people praying. Yeah, I love that. We've got thousands of people praying, so we don't need the sedatives. Like, nurse, can you get me 10 more cc's of prayer stat? Uh, where, <laughs> where C, C stands for 100 Christians, because it's using C, you got the Roman numeral, because it's, because it's science. Oh, uh, that- okay. It's not like homeopathy where they're like deluded Christians. <laughs> okay. So, and, and I guess at this point, Ben's character is supposed to be drunk. Because he starts slurring his speech. That was the only way I could figure it out because he's such a bad fucking actor. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that he always kind of seems drunk. He does. And he's sort of being an arsehole to people. He's patronizing people. And I thought, well, this guy, he's an arsehole who's weirdly proud of doing martial arts badly. He's patronizing to all the people around him. And he expresses an irritatingly self-important form of atheism. Is this the James Lindsay <gasps> biopic? Oh, okay. I thought we were... <laughs> Is is the Breakfast Club clause going to be where he takes money from Christian nationalists to pretend that racism doesn't exist? Hey, I, I I was sure you were going Joe Rogan, but you went a different way on me. That was good. That was good. Oh, maybe James Lindsay will get into a car accident. <laughs> but th- this was this was a w- the one good thing that the Ben character said. He kind of has like an atheist angle here. He's like, okay, well, if Luke doesn't recover. Will you assholes admit that God is either fake or the worst? <laughs> and the movie again is like, Roomba must turn around. <laughs> <laughs> we get uh, Ben's at home and he's got to hit rock bottom, which 
means breaking things because toxic masculinity. So he like drops the bottle and then he picks up something else glass and he breaks that like a fucking <laughs> cat knocking shit off the counter. He runs down the street and there's a pane of glass being carried by two guys. <laughs> <laughs> I hate my life. <laughs> So and they, there have been these little framed boxing gloves, not really gloves, just the tape under the gloves or whatever that have been framed with a note that's like, you know, to dad from Ben the whole time. So he picks those up and he breaks those because it's the breaking part of the movie. I'd say his character arc has reached a, a nadir, perhaps. Yes, yes. Uh -huh. <laughs> so, OK, so now we're going to head back to the bar where the tattooed bartender is cutting him off. He's been drinking too much. <laughs> he's like he's confused again. And justifiably so, he's drunk also, so it's even worse. He's just like, I don't understand your AA chip bet. So Luke, he's back in a coma now. Do do I give you one chip and then you raise back? <laughs> do you owe me chips? I don't understand. Yeah. And the bartender's like, yeah, okay, well, it's only been a few weeks. But yeah, you you give me a chip to, to we keep score with. So I don't know what's happening. Well, she says, well, you know what? I got a very rare six month chip that just came in. And that somehow represents the fact that you're giving up too soon. And he's like, are you sh are you sure? That's that's not what that means. <laughs> no, and the thing is, she's all. really, really happy to have it. She says this six month guy, you know, he, he, he said he'd given this give me this chip because he'll never see me again. It's like that's that's not how that works. You're the bartender. He's giving you that chip because he's drinking. Right. He's given, he's giving up the six months. You don't know how AA chips work, which is weird because <laughs> AA is one of your things. Right. You guys yes, can do that. Exactly. Yeah. Do like successfully recovering alcoholics go back to the bar for spite and like slap the chip on the bar? Six months. Yeah. Fuck you. Gotcha. You keep this now. These are people who've fallen off the wagon and you're keeping them as trophies. You're like predator with skulls around your neck. <laughs> <So> <laughs> And this is the point as well where Ben, as drunk as he is, he falls over. And I really wanted just someone, anyone, to start punching him while he's down on the floor. Like, see how you like this. <laughs> so, okay. And then there's this great moment. So I guess Ben left the bar and went back to the hospital and just passed out drunk in the hospital waiting room. Because we get mom showing up there to see him. And she's like, oh, yeah. you smell like booze. And he's like, oh, I'm not doing enough moping. I'm doing too much moping. It's all you, you're never good enough for you. <laughs> yeah, his mom says you reek and you need a shower. And I thought that's the first line of this film I've really believed. Like, I genuinely <laughs> think that's true. <laughs> that he can pull off. That Ben can yeah. pull off. Yeah. <laughs> Looks like he needs a shower is very accurate about this actor all the time. Yeah. Yeah. yeah he's got that on one of his headshots. That's one of the, one of the characters he can be. <laughs> <laughs> unshowered guy number well number two but <laughs> yeah right so let's not get greedy here and then of course we have to have the scene where dad's looking over the hospital bill because our country is terrible and broken and they're like you know and ben's like aren't we insured and he's like well so we're not this insured it's like oh fuck you america jesus yeah no but sorry because the dad's got a plan because he said god's going to provide for us and i want him to carry on because you know i heard about this alternative health insurance where we give our money to other christians <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but then, but just then, Luke ever so slightly wakes up and his eyes are almost open. So, hooray, go God. And they start talking to him like a baby who hasn't developed object permanence. Like, hey, Luke, are you there, Luke? Hello. It's like, he's not a child. He's not gone right. When you have a coma, you don't reset to zero and then have to go through all your development <laughs> as a baby again. It's not like a Benjamin Button kind of thing. <laughs> Well, so yeah, so and then we get this, we jump ahead a little bit and Ben is trying to rehab Luke by just moving his arm, just going like arm movement, <laughs> right? Like the guy, like the asshole who pushes the guy in the wheelchair without asking version of rehab. Yeah, yeah. And Ashley comes in and she's like, hey, Ben, you, uh, you moving his arms and legs to jumpstart his brain? This doesn't count. You want to like pull it like a chainsaw? You can't do that. <laughs> and he's like, yes, it does. It worked. And the. And then Luke actually moves his leg here. Yeah, he, he moves it. He goes from fully paralyzed to a horizontal river dance. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's it's incredible. He goes to, you're right. Yeah. Well, but at first I love it because he, he starts doing this little river dance and they're like, oh, get, go get the doctor. Let the doctor know. The doctor comes in and he, he at first he Michigan J frogs it for a bit, you know, yep. and, yeah. and they say like, he was river dancing a minute ago, but then he does it again. And, and 
But again, it's <laughs> Christian movie doctor, so he's like, I don't know. And then, and, but Ben knows, damn it. Yeah, and Ben's like, well, how could he move like that with a an entirely broken back? And the doctor's like, I don't know. I, you know what? I'm gonna look into some science. I've been meaning to do that, but this is not explainable with science, as far as I know. I'm a doctor. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. It's so weird. They say maybe do more X-rays in his back, and he goes, Yeah, we'll look into that. Like, what? You didn't think of that? He's got a, he's got a patient. With wrong. <laughs> Have you not been X-raying his back to see how it's been mending? Oh yeah, no, good call, man. X-rays. You should really be wearing this stethoscope. What the fuck am I doing with it? All right, so sometime later we go, oh, this is maybe the best effort at improv that we get in the entire movie. This is the scene where Ben shows up with Ashley and they brought some lunch for the mom and he goes, hey, mom, we brought you lunch in this bag of lunch because it's lunchtime and you would want to eat lunch at lunchtime. <laughs> Please, somebody say their goddamn scripted line. Midday food. <laughs> Who goes next? <laughs> Brunch also. Fuck. God damn it. Can we cut? I wrote my notes at this point. I'm like, okay, so if God loved this kid as much as Hoovy, he gets to play soccer again by the end of the movie. Let's see. Competition. <laughs> so, yeah, but he's brought a few mementos and everything. He he gives Luke a picture of his mom who's sitting right in front of him. Yeah. It's like, oh, he recognizes his mom from the picture. It's like, you didn't have to bring... She's right there. Yeah. She's right there. <laughs> you brought look, her lunch. Look slightly up. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right. Oh, and when, when he says that he recognizes that they can't hear him speak, so they've got to put their finger over the tracheotomy hole on his neck so that they can hear him speak, which I don't know if that's a weird, if that's a real thing, but it was very strange in this scene. It was pretty fucked up, especially because <laughs> I could understand him. <laughs> yeah, I could as well. It's, they just wanted to do that. It's like, come on, when else are you going to get a chance to touch a neck hole? This is, this is where it goes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, what, if I put a pencil, if, I'm not going to put it all the way in. Not all the way. Right, but, but then, Luke, so Luke recognizes his mom in the picture and he kisses the picture and it's a big deal mom loves it and then he, he's like who's that girl there which and that's ashley right mm -hmm. yeah yeah the his girlfriend. brother's girlfriend his brother's girlfriend right and so he doesn't recognize her and <laughs> they cut over to mom for a second they show her face and she's kind of happy about this whole exchange <laughs> she's like yeah recognize me still not this girl great <laughs> well once again, they've roombud themselves into a corner, though, because she's like, the mom's like, oh, thank the Lord. He's made a complete recovery. And then he's like, so who the fuck is that chick with you? <laughs> a, a, right. Almost complete recovery. God damn it. This is a fictional movie. Why does this keep happening? Yeah. Spoiler. The movie will stay in this corner like a Roomba that's very confused for the rest of the movie. <laughs> yep. yep. All right. So then we get them wheeling Luke around in very much not miraculous recovery gear. No, no, mm -mm. no. He, okay. He's wearing a mountaineering helmet, I think. Like yeah. in the last scene, the doctor wasn't remotely fizzed when he was like horizontal river dancing and throwing himself around in the bed, but now he needs a mountaineering helmet at all times, apparently. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But this is where dad gets the call from the real Salt Lake scout, and he's like, <laughs> uh, so, um, does he still have enough of a head for soccer? I mean, like, how much head are we missing here? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's going to play left wing, so he's mostly going to be heading with the right hand side of his head. Oh, anyway. God. So I think <laughs> <laughs> he might be able to catch it in the left. Yeah, hand really. Side, though, it's got a weird shape. Can... It's got like a little. <laughs> you could stick it. Yeah, maybe you could just run around with it. Actually, <laughs> <laughs> I feel like he's good enough for Real Salt Lake anyway. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Real Salt Lake. Yeah, <laughs> he's looking. He's looking MLS good in terms of his yeah, recovery. No, I'd say, yeah. <laughs> But, and then he's like, well, hey, just so you know, Dad, um, if it hadn't been for that accident, he was going to be our first round draft pick. And then the dad's like, why would you tell me that? Maybe That's just leave that out. It's just, you <laughs> don't, don't have don't to do that. imagine. Just let me just tell you what an amazing dream was, was stolen from him by God. <laughs> do you hear that? I'm ripping up a really big check that I was going to write in this talks. <laughs> I mean, also, I, if you're the dad, I, I feel you don't tell the scout that he may never play again until you know he's not going to play again. Right. Because if he does play again, that scout's not coming back because there's loads of other people to go and see. You, that, you've just ruined his dream just as much as anything else. <laughs> really? Yeah. And so, okay, so so they're, you know, Ben finds out about that. He's very upset. This guy is such a bad fucking actor that he screws up standing still at this point. He's like pushing <laughs> against the wall as though he's trying to get through it. Or something. And then, and then I wrote my notes and then he has an idea or he's such a bad actor that he doesn't know he's doing the I have an idea face. It was the latter. 
Yep. Yes. <laughs> he didn't yeah. have an idea. <laughs> no, no, he didn't. I thought he was confused about whether his next move had to be to go and beat up the scout for, for the, the chance. Going, oh, OK. Uh, and and right. he seemed yeah. just as confused about that question as well. I like, well, I guess the only thing that makes sense in this arc is I go and beat him up because I, I beat people up when I'm unhappy. Right. We've heard of a guy who's made us unhappy. Right. This is just maths at this point. Punch solve now. Yeah. <laughs> right. No, it's uh, like he realized, wait, I shouldn't be carrying a nine. Why would I be carrying a nine? It couldn't be. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, so and then we get once again, somebody has to act circles around Ben. So we get the scene where like Luke is sick and tired of his recovery and he's screaming at his parents that he hates them and he's frothing at the mouth. And somehow Ben manages to get upset because they're all paying attention to Luke in that moment. So he storms off. <laughs> yeah, he's the absolute worst person. How you can watch that and still be a prick about your role in this is, is incredible. Uh, look at me. I'm moving my back around better than he is. Look, <laughs> look, I'm doing trunk twists, trunk twists, sit ups. <laughs> Look, Ashley, that's Ashley, that's Ashley. See, I can recognize the lords. <laughs> <laughs> Even from the, the side. He's making out with mom. Back. <laughs> okay, don't. That's enough. All right. And then, so then we get the, we get some, some new doctor shows up. Why didn't they just use the same fucking doctor actor? Some new doctor shows up, x rays his spine and says, oh, yeah, no, he's, he's doing great. He's miraculously healed. And they're like, are you sure? Cause he's got, he had a lot of braces and surgeries and like miraculously, miraculously healed. His vertebra are stable. Was unstable vertebra his problem? I didn't think it was a stability issue. He had a broken back, I thought. Yeah. Well, the doctors played a little Jenga and then, you know, that's, that's what the, but the prayer is what did it. Yeah. Yeah. But now he no longer has a broken back. They've prayed his bones back together and somehow this isn't the end of the movie or the end of atheism. And if they, if they really prayed his bones back together, it should have been the end of both. Oh, God. I love it. The mom just turns to him and he says, God healed you. And I'm like, the doctor is right fucking there, lady. Come on. That's why they got a new doctor. The first guy just got so pissed off right, that all his work yeah, was being attributed to God. Right. God did, that, that, I'm not seeing those guys again. They're absolute pricks. Right. He's like, oh, no, no. The God's got them. They're fine. They're, they'll be fine, apparently. As they said, he didn't want any more drugs or a tracheotomy. Jesus. Yeah, actually, according to Rifra, as an atheist, I sincerely believe I don't have to help you anymore. So yeah, that's what's happening. <laughs> so, okay. So meanwhile, Ben is off training at the gym some more and a promoter shows up there wanting to give one of the people in that gym a title fight, but he's not sure which one. <laughs> 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 this is so stupid. He, <laughs> he runs up and he's like, hey, I heard you were giving out a title fight. And he's like, yeah, we're to, to this guy, to Venom, to your rival. Yeah. And he's like, I, he I, he should have to fight me for it. <laughs> yeah, he said, I, I would also like a title fight. And the promoter says, you know what? Yeah, that'll make it better. You know, he, but it's so strange because, yeah, he says, I had, he said, increase the appeal of the title fight if we had another person to it. But then he says, we, we need to get two of the fighters. So we've got, yes, well, I'll go up and get two of the fighters. But he was already arranging a title fight with the other fighter. So unless right. they only had the one guy, <laughs> then you had two guys. You've got Ben come in and he's going to have to get another two guys. At which point you're going to go for like a mini league format of five people. So like each one has to fight four <laughs> fights, but then you're going to have an advantage to the guy who sat out the first round because he's going to be fresh coming in. So you need to some sort of, some sort of seeding or waiting into account. It's, it's just not right. You know, it makes it so this random guy in the gym wanted in on the title fight. So instead of having one big fight, we're going to have essentially a round robin of 11 different fights. To figure this out. <laughs> All right, let's pull the coaches to see who gets the bye in the first it's right. round robin. <laughs> Fuck, this is hard. So yeah, so he's like, he's like, yeah, sure, that's how it works. Suddenly, and we'll give an <laughs> extra ten thousand dollars to whoever wins this mini tournament on the way. <laughs> Not, I don't again, don't know a lot about MMA. I know enough to know that ain't how it works. So. <laughs> <laughs> by the way, this is where we learn that Ben Bernard goes by Ben. The favorite Bernard as his oh, fighter name. <laughs> it's the worst, so the worst nickname. It's the worst nickname. And he's giving it himself. Ben, my dad loves me in his own way, Bernard. <laughs> <laughs> he does, though. <laughs> Bernard, the fighter. Well, and then we cut. Okay, so we have this scene where apparently this is so fucked up, right? They get all the people who are rehabbing from spinal injuries and make them race. What <laughs> is do. going on here? <laughs> it's, and it's a real crowd. It's a real crowd pleasing event. Yes. It really draws the crowd in. <laughs> well, okay. So they've got the, so they've got all of these rehab people trying to walk around a track. They have 27 people standing around cheering from, but the sound effects are like three orders of magnitude. Like it's a fucking 
football stadium worth of people cheering from him, but we see like 11 people standing around. Yeah. It's hilarious. <laughs> from the soundtrack, the this is more of a spectator uh, event than any of the MMA fights that we'll see. Yep, you're right. <laughs> you're right. <laughs> so yeah, but Luke is, is walking and everybody's cheering from, and then he decides he's going to start running and he falls down immediately. <laughs> mm, so. Yeah, he does. It's not funny because he's injured. He could get hurt, but it's, not, it's but it's still it's kind of funny. So they pick him up, they put him back in his wheelchair. Yeah, they tell him uh, there's no shame in finishing in the chair. And I thought, where's the Eli Bosnick story? When you <laughs> <laughs> I can't tell if Marsh meant electric or cum just now. <laughs> I'm leaving it right up, out there, right out there. Okay. okay. <laughs> so yeah, but he's he's feeling really bad about himself and really bummed, and he doesn't want to go over the finish line in the wheelchair. So Ben decides that he believes in him he's like you don't need no stinking wheelchair and i'm like he just fell down he's mm. missing a big chunk of his skull guys what and and ben's like no no no, it'll be fine listen to the music in the background it's uplifting it's uplifting you it do it there. So, so ben helps him and they're going you know they're, they're, they're making towards the finish, finish line and even start doing some injury banter saying look now we're neck and neck luke says to ben and i wanted ben to come back with more like neck and broken neck am i right <laughs> uh, oh shit sorry i've gone too far i've gone too far sorry luke sorry <laughs> zing right <laughs> right oh god so we cut back to the gym we, we have some conversation that is both meaningless and sexist at the same fucking time Again, we have improvised banter with his friend who's so much better at it, despite apparently not being an actor. Because, uh, hey, they call me Flash. What do they call you, Ben? He's like, ah, that's yeah. stupid. Sorry, stupid. <laughs> oh, wait, that's stupid. Sorry, no, no. Yeah. Again, this is literally Uriah Hall. Yes, the MMA fighter who is acting <laughs> circles around the actor who wrote the script. Yep. Amazing. Yeah. So, and, and, and then Venom is, is very upset, right? So, so his rival comes in with the whole, like, you know, what's this day of rest shit moment. And <laughs> when Ben walks off, we get this incredibly meaningless little bit where Michael, the, the rival turns to the guy who up until this point has been Ben's training buddy. And he's like, Hey, you and I are in cahoots for later in the movie to take Ben down. Right. And he's like, we sure are. Yeah. Are you still with me on what we talked about? Wink. Yeah. <laughs> right. The line in the script. <laughs> Are you still with me on the foreshadowing? I sure am. <laughs> All right. So, and, and then we, we head back to the hospital. We have to have the moment where dad tells Luke that his fiance died in the accident. I feel like, I feel like he noticed she wasn't there by now, right? <laughs> it's been a fortnight at least. Yeah. yeah <laughs> exactly. And the way dad breaks it to him is to say, you know, oh, you remember Rebecca? She's your, well, she was your fiance. And I thought that's not a very good intonation to deliver wow. that sentence with. Yeah. <laughs> Smooth. But he's got the mind of a very small child. So he's like, ugh, girls, gross. Okay, good. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, but Luke is being discharged from the hospital now. And he's like, hey, guys, is it okay with mom, dad? Is it okay with you if I ride home with Ben? And they're like, oh, yeah, man, things went so good last time you guys were in a car together. You might as well. <laughs> yeah, I was like, oh, please be another crash. Please, it'd be great if there was another car crash at this point. <laughs> oh, if Luke just like headbutts him in the chest with his helmet or his sharp <laughs> skull area or something. Yeah. yeah, there you go. But Ben wants to go to his, his dead fiance's place and see her parents and then go to her grave. So we do all of that. Also, when, when they get to the grave, I, I was thinking, all right, next miracle, Hispanic girlfriend back from the dead. You know, Jesus, you've you done it once before. That's a proper miracle. <laughs> we'd, be, we'd be well up for that. Right, right. Yeah. So if you, you're promising us a miracle, give us a real fucking miracle. So, yeah. And, and also, so he's looking at the, he's like watching the grave and Ben is watching him talk to the grave. And I know it's because he's a bad actor, but Ben looks jealous of the grave because it's getting more attention than him. Right. <laughs> <laughs> So he comes back and he's like, you know, so, hey, what did what did you say to the grave? And he's like, oh, I can't tell you or it won't come true. Right. And he's like, no, that's not. It's, um, never mind. It's not, not a thing. <laughs> the next scene, Ben's dressed up with a bunch of flowers all over the top of him. I also, you should pay attention to me. <laughs> 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 was that what it was? Also, it's a weird thing. It's a small thing. But in the background, one of the other graves has a balloon on it. And who who brings balloons to a graveyard? Is that a thing? That I seems don't, like a very I weird choice. That's a thing. Mm. <laughs> balloon. I don't think Luke Bernard knows that isn't a thing. I don't, <laughs> okay, don't fair. Think he knows you that. go fair. to a party city. What's a good helium balloon for a grave? Are you going to do the voice at the grave? Don't do the voice at the grave. That's probably a bad idea. So then, okay, so but then, like 
Luke and, and Ben have a little heart to heart. He's like, yeah, you know, I, I apologize to, to the grave because I was driving when, when the accident was caused. And, like, and Ben's like, mm, about that. And you're going to laugh. <laughs> so, so. <laughs> oh, yeah. so you know how I'm the worst at everything? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I killed your fiance. It was my fault. And he tells him the story of how he punched him in the chest in, in, into unconsciousness while driving on a highway. Yeah. This is manslaughter. Right. Yes, it is. You literally killed this lady. She's dead because of you. And this, uh, because you lost your temper and you punched him, as, uh, apparently, as you say, with everything you had. I mean, we watched it. It wasn't that big of a punch, but it's probably all you had from what we've seen you doing the rest of the fight. But <laughs> you killed him on this. Right. Right. Yeah. So, so we, we flash back to the, to the accident. We finally see how it happened. And it turns out that they were talking shit. The brother was ribbing him. And so he punched him unconscious mid drive. <sighs> and needless to say, when Luke finds out about this, he's quite upset. He does. He is. He takes off his helmet and yells, I have half a head. And for the first time, we see the result of the craniotomy. And he, he does have half a head. And it was, I was not expecting to see the CG hole in the head. That was, that was, that took me by surprise. Yeah, they honestly kind of did a good job with it. Right. That was the one part of the movie where I was like, Oh, wow, I'm watching a movie. Yeah. 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 Right. Definitely. That reveal was very solid. Just absolutely took your breath away. Of course, I'm such a pedant. I'm like, well, that's three quarters of a head at least. But <laughs> <laughs> and I, I also want to say, when he tells this story, Luke's first response is, I have half a head, not my fiance and the love of my life is dead because of right, you. Right, so yeah. I, like, oh, I feel oh, you also, go to fiance thing first. Also, yeah. Come on, man. <laughs> Your head's half full. <laughs> <laughs> right? And in fairness, we can understand why he's so upset because we established earlier in the scouting scene that he's really into hats. He does like hats. Oh, and this, right, this yeah. Is, it's going to make him hard to wear hats. It's going to fit it all. So he's lost a lot. He's lost a lot. Jesus Christ. Right. So yeah, so he takes he takes his brother home. Then he goes over to Ashley's place hoping for some I didn't mean to kill her and cripple my brother sympathy. And strangely enough, Ashley's not uh, she doesn't have much to give. Yeah, because like, yes, you did mean it. You said you punched him with everything you had. So you definitely meant it. Yeah. And how did Ashley miss? Ashley was in the car. How did she miss that he punched the, the driver? How did that pass her by? She was sat behind him. Right. Yeah. Seems like you'd notice that. Yeah. <laughs> and again, Ashley's response to this is, look what you've done to Luke. Your best friend died in that accident. Right. But she doesn't count because she's a woman. And therefore, look what you've done to Luke. He can no longer wear hats well. <laughs> well, and she eventually gets around to herself, too. She's like, oh, right. And my dream of dancing and everything because a shattered ankle. I also you also fucked me on this. And he's like, right. Right. You're a woman. I didn't think about you. <laughs> So, yeah, she doesn't want him around anymore. So he drives off and he yells at himself for a little while. And I'm like, you know what? Driving around yelling at yourself is this movie, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's just arguing with himself and being all mad. If he had punched himself and caused a big accident. That was <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. That's what we deserve to see at this point. Right, right. That would be the proper comeuppance. I just wrote in my notes, wow, the director decided this actor could... Carry a scene all by himself, huh? Woof. <laughs> <laughs> all right, well, I'll tell you what. Ben clearly needs a minute to work through his feelings, so we're going to pause for another quick break. But first, let me give Act 3 the hard sell here. Can this script redeem Ben in time? Will the script even realize it's supposed to do that? What would the script say it does here? <laughs> Find out the answers <laughs> to these out? questions and more when we return for the villain gets away with it conclusion of The Favorites. Twigs and brambles. Lumpy gray paste, man. Twigs and brambles. Come on, lumpy gray paste. Let's do it. Guys, guys, what are you arguing about? Oh, good. Marsh, you can settle it. Fine. Okay, Marsh, we're trying to decide on a healthy breakfast. Should we do twigs and brambles again or lumpy gray paste? Why don't you just try something delicious instead? Like, how about a bowl of cereal? We're, we're looking for a healthy breakfast, Marsh. They, they don't come in delicious. They do with a magic spoon. Oh, what's... Magic spoon. Magic spoon is the healthy cereal that actually tastes of food. Zero grams of sugar, 13 to 14 grams of protein, and only four net grams of carbs in each serving. Wow, is that all? No, no, uh, only 140 calories per serving. Plus it's keto-friendly, gluten-free, soy-free, and low-carb. Wow, some of those things matter that you said. 
Sure does. Some of those definitely do. And you can build your own box too. There's uh, flavors to build your own custom bundles. There's cocoa, fruity, frosted, peanut butter, blueberry, cinnamon, and there's returning flavors, cookies and cream and maple waffle. Wow. Those sound perfect for a healthy breakfast or a midnight snack. And best of all, you can save $5 by using our promo code. So just go to magicspoon.com slash gam to grab a custom bundle of cereal and try today. And be sure to use that promo code gam at the checkout to save $5 off your order. Okay, but what if I don't like it? Well, Magic Spoon is so confident in their product that it's backed with a 100% happiness guarantee. So if you don't like it for any reason at all, they'll refund your money, no questions asked. Remember, get your next delicious bowl of guilt-free cereal at magicspoon.com slash gam and use the code gam to save $5 off. Thank you, Magic Spoon, for sponsoring this episode. So is this what you have for breakfast? Oh, God, no, no, I'm English. So our breakfasts have got like beans and uh, grilled tomatoes on them. That's so weird. Yeah, but it, it's objectively the least weird food thing that we do. Fair. Okay. <laughs> I've, I've got a confession to make. Luke. Yeah. Yeah. What is it, Ben? The accident was, it was kind of my fault. It was your fault? What do you mean? Well, I just couldn't take your smug remarks anymore. So I, I punched you as hard as I could while we were going down a dark highway uh, at 60 miles an hour. Sorry, wait. You killed my fiancé and destroyed my chances at a normal life? You punched me? Yeah, I I sure did, Prom. So, um, can you, can you ever forgive me? No. What? Oh, um, you sure? Yeah, absolutely sure. Uh, What's more, I should not forgive you. I should, why would I do that? Uh, I, I feel like you should, like, eventually. No, no, I definitely should not. What's more, any worldview that would suggest I should forgive you is flawed, at least to the extent that it says I should forgive you. Jesus, you killed somebody because you were in a snit about a playful fraternal ribbing thing? You punched me? Oh, come on. I wouldn't I wouldn't say I killed her. Oh, you wouldn't say that? Really? Did you expect some non-fatal thing to happen when you pummeled me unconscious while I was driving? Oh, well, you know, I just, I mean, I thought... You're an evil villain who doesn't deserve to be forgiven. You should have to have the details tattooed on your face so everybody that passes you in the street knows to hate you for this. I'm, I'm not, I'm not that bad. You are exactly, you're worse than that bad. Name one thing Darth Vader did that's worse than what you just confessed to me. Oh, come on. Darth Vader blew up a whole planet. Uh, so actually, uh, resident Star Wars nerd here, Grand Moff Tarkin blew up Alderaan, uh, not. Right. Yeah. Fine. But Darth Vader sort of stood by while a whole planet was destroyed. And we're all doing that every day, bro. So, okay, yeah, true. Um, who are you though? I'm the, I'm the resident Star Wars nerd. I just said that. Right. Yeah, you said that. Okay. Okay. How about this, Luke? What if, what if I apologize to my imagination? Could, could you forgive me if I did that? Hmm. Will the apology be out loud? No. Yeah, that'll work. I guess. This is how our religion works. Sure is. We're Christian. And we're back for still more of this shit. We're going to rejoin Ben at the gym, practicing punching things since, you know, that's gone so well for him so often (laughs) in his life. (laughs) Trainers pep talking him. And I feel like he should have to stop and just be like, oh, uh, we just learned that I killed a lady and and crippled my brother for life and my girlfriend uh, and ended her career and everything. I don't nobody should be nice to me for the remainder of the film. You you should you deserve to know this. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Whereas instead, the trainer just gives him like some advice. You know, you've got two fights tonight. Don't get injured. And don't get injured is basically the only real advice you need in MMA. If you can achieve that, you've that's probably true. won yes. the fight. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. And, and that's it is hilarious how banal the advice he gives him is. He's like, all right, so when he tries to punch you, don't let him do that. Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Hold on. I'm just writing this down. Don't get punched. Punch other Guy. Okay, got it. Got it, got it. <laughs> right, you're sorry. All right. I've got cheat notes on my arm now. Okay, so now the first big fight starts. He looks over right before the fight starts, and the, the seats that are reserved for his mom and dad are empty. Why would they be there? He's sad because the family he tried to kill in a car, basically, didn't turn up to watch him try to hurt a man hours after they found out he tried to kill their other son and successfully killed their son, their daughter-in-law. And they've <sighs> never been to one of his fights, right? Like that's been like the, they, they, they've always not. Why does he keep reserving a seat for it's so sad? 
Can you do like an amateur dance recital instead? That would be way more fun for us to go see you do stuff. You want to do that? I feel like the person who runs the venue would stop giving him those reserved seats. You're right. Oh, you yeah, exactly. seats? <laughs> yeah. yeah I'm, uh, we've done that like five or six times now, but we could sell two tickets. He's going to show up. He loves me in his own way. That's, that's why it's my name. And then, yeah, so the fight starts. The trainer's yelling, hit him with that one, two. And I'm like, yeah, nobody's expecting punch, punch. <laughs> <laughs> Do the old one fake. There you go. Yeah, there Just you go. one. <laughs> so, and by the way, this guy's takedown technique sucks. There is nothing that looks sillier than a failed takedown in MMA, right? Because <laughs> it looks like you really want to blow him and then you change your mind. <laughs> 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 and of course, because this is a Christian movie and they can't have excessive violence, all the rounds are like nine seconds long. Oh yeah, yeah. They're just instantly over. So like, no long, no wonder you didn't get him to the ground. That's why Tank got uh, knocked out so quickly. It's because in that gym, they all know if you don't get it in the first two seconds, the round's yeah. over. <laughs> so they just throw everything at the wall. <laughs> right. So yeah, but he doesn't do very good in the first round. So he goes back to his corner, and the trainer's like, "Come on, man, we are all the way into Act Three now. Fight better." Yeah, the trainer's advice is get him to the ground. It's like I think you've seen him fight before. I think you've seen <laughs> his uh, his form before. <laughs> You know his signature move, don't you? Fight better. Got it. That's really helpful. Okay, I don't know, man. What am I supposed to do? All right, select, select, select. Did that help? <laughs> there you go. So Mike Tyson. So he, he, he goes back out for round two, but now he's been fully pep-talked, so he's fighting good now. And the trainer's like, that's what I'm talking about. I'm like, what were you talking about? Fighting better? <laughs> and it's better. <laughs> And then this is so silly. They try so hard here. This is when dad shows up and sits down in the reserved seat long enough to watch Ben knock this guy out. And then he leaves immediately after. Yeah. Why? Why? Why does he leave immediately after? <laughs> I just do not understand this at all. I think the movie inflected too early and it panicked. They were like, <laughs> have him run back out. We need Ben to still be all mopey. There we go. Yeah, He's gone. So he had to pee or something. I don't know, but he showed up and he watched eight seconds of the fight and then he ran off. He didn't stand there chanting and screaming during practice like he does for the son he loves or anything. Right. So Ben looks over and the, the seat's still empty and so he's still all mopey. So yes. good. Mission right. accomplished. Th that moves the plot forward, I guess. Yeah, So, so but he wins by knockout. So now he's got to get ready for his second fight. He's got an hour between fights and he's like, it says to his trainer, hey, man, I might have to leave to take care of some personal shit. And the fight, the trainer's like, fucking no, just just no. Like, we, we, you've got another fight in a goddamn hour. Why would you have personal shit now? <laughs> yeah, that can be done what in half an hour with a 15 minute drive either way. Definitely not. But the way that his trainer tells him that is I never left a soldier behind. But I will in your case. Which is yeah, so right. <laughs> <laughs> Because what do you mean leaving a soldier behind? That, that no no version of this conversation reflects or, or resembles it in any way. Not leaving a soldier behind, like that that choice. No, nope. that is not an analogous situation at all to what's going on now. The guy's leaving. You're not leaving him behind. No, yeah, right, right, exactly, exactly. <laughs> I've, I've I've let other soldiers leave though because yeah, exactly. <laughs> I can't stop that from happening. <laughs> he just wanted to use a quote with an analogy. It's it's like the movie is trying to sound out a screenwriting book as best <laughs> it can. <laughs> Badly, does not. It's not a strong reader. So yeah, so he calls Ashley. She doesn't take his call, and so then he drives home to yell at his parents for not being at his fight right is that what happened he drove home between fights to yell at his dad for not yes, having did. and then his dad drove home to see if he'd driven home to yell at him for not being at his <laughs> yeah. fight yeah, it's but... so strange because his dad comes in and says to the mom have you seen ben so what do you mean you were just at the fight <laughs> you saw it you're the one who's seen ben she should be asking you that but then it turns out <laughs> ben's already there so he's teleported? Did he take a different route? Does he know the shortcut because he goes to gym so often? Uh, how did he get there before his dad? It's it's right. baffling. And to be clear, Ben goes home and this is what he says. He's like, life is unfair to me. Luke has it so much better than me. This is bullshit. <laughs> yes. Dad and mom just look at each other like, hey man, did you hear it? 
Did you hear what you just said? <laughs> he says, you've always put him first. It's like, you broke his back, you fucking plum. Of course they're pissed off with you. <laughs> right. And then he picks up Luke's soccer trophy and he's like, it was always about Luke. And he breaks the fucking trophy. Yeah. And I really wanted the, the soccer player on top of the trophy to have a dented head. Like, oh, that is. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that is that's not great. Oh, that was really on point. Guys, sorry about that. But then Luke walks in and he's like, Dude, you already killed my... You're breaking my childhood shit now, too? Yeah. And Ben is like trying to forgive himself. He's like, yeah, you know what? I screwed up. And I'm like, dude, you you killed one person and nearly could, screwed up doesn't capture it, I don't think. Let's like, yeah. go for a stronger term. He shouts, no matter how good a son I am, nothing will ever be good enough. It's like, you punch people for a living. You walk around shouting at people and you killed your brother's fiance. Like, the no matter how good a son I am, have you tried being a good son? Have you actually put <laughs> that maxim to the test first? Do anything Wait, good ever. Every response to him is like, do better because you're the worst. <laughs> just once, one time, one time, do something good. Just once, see what it feels like. <laughs> and then he turns to his dad. He's like, and you weren't even at my fight. He's like, actually, I was. He's like, I don't want to hear it. And then he slams the door. <laughs> right. Yeah. You weren't there when I needed you the most. You know, the time I was punching a man in the face when he was on the floor, you were too busy being with my brother who's recovering from the broken back I gave him. Right. Yeah, exactly. You <laughs> greedy bastard. <laughs> So, yeah, but that was between fights because he leaves from there and he goes back to his second fight. This one will be with his rival, Venom. Are they still doing MMA tournaments like that with multiple fights on the same day, like UFC 1? Probably if you're bad enough, yeah. Maybe, maybe locals? Yeah, I don't okay. know. But So he goes back to fight this fight, but now since he left in the middle of the fight, the trainer's not his trainer anymore, right? He left his, his soldier behind, I guess. <laughs> So it, we even get him like standing there looking at himself in the mirror going, it's okay, Ben, you don't need anybody in your corner. It's like, oh, in case we didn't get it. <laughs> yes, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so he gets in the ring. The audience cheers for him. Once again, I feel like he should have to stop him and go, actually, I killed my brother's fiance, crippled him and uh, ruined my girlfriend's career. I don't feel like, I feel like you should know that before you cheer for me. Should I tattoo that on my face? It feels Not like really. that would be ethical. Probably. Should I mean, at the very least, they should change his nickname to that. Yeah. <laughs> that would be much better. <laughs> it's clunky, but it's honest. Yeah, yeah, and, in, right. and in the blue corner, Ben killed his brother's fiance and crippled his brother. Oh, one of his fucking surnames. Bernard. Is. Bernard, yeah, there right. you go. <laughs> oh, Jesus. And then, oh, God, we get these. So the fight's about to start. They want to have crowd shots, but they don't have a crowd. So we get, <laughs> I, I am not making this shit up. This happens in the movie. We get several two visible person crowd shots. Mm. Right? It's very, very dark, and we can just see light cast over two faces, and one of them's holding the Go Ben sign. Okay, one other sign that's in the crowd. Somebody made a big poster. They went out. They went out. They bought oak tag. Mm -hmm, they bought mm -hmm. markers and they wrote and glitter. Fight, fight, fight. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. They will though. They're going to. So yeah. There's a, there is another poster there that just says Ben is our favorite, which is just <laughs> such a bland <laughs> sign. I missed that one. That's it's great. so vanilla. <laughs> Wordplay. I bet it. somebody fight, would. Fight. I bet somebody would have a sign about how awesome I am, huh? Probably. In the, <laughs> oh God! All right. So him and Michael's fight starts. The choreography is so slow and turn based that you can basically count along with them, right? <laughs> Elbow two, three, four. Kick two, three. Block. Yeah. <laughs> and there's a lot of like. Okay, stop. Too hard. Too hard. We step back now. We both <laughs> yeah, step back. Right. No corner yeah. traps. We said no corner. It's like a lot of kid <laughs> rules were established off camera about this fight. <laughs> and then once again, in case you're not entirely convinced that Ben is the fucking bad guy in this movie, when the bell rings, the ref can barely pull him off of the other guy. Yeah. He's constantly punching people after the bell goes. Like, he's so obviously the bad guy. Like, all we need to do is find out that his plan, if he wins, is to tear down the gym to put up apartments. And that right. Michael the Venom, <laughs> right. you know, he wants the money to rescue orphans. That's, that's how the narrative ought to go, to be consistent with Ben's character. <laughs> yeah. So, okay, so, but the round ends. This is where his friend, the traitor guy, enacts his plan and butters Michael, the rival up, with Vaseline so he can't be grappled. 
Yeah, he's like yeah. lubing up his his calves and his his shins, which I had no idea what was going on because I'm <laughs> I'm not an MMA guy. I don't know anything about it. So I thought, why why is he lubing his opponent up? That seems very strange. Yeah, yeah. I was confused. So they show like an ominous Vaseline dab on the trainer's <laughs> hand for a second. Yeah, for like a big shot, and I was like, what? <laughs> Does the movie think? Vaseline is cheating like in baseball like he's gonna like kick a good slider now like it's <laughs> no but it's okay he's putting it on his legs and we're supposed to understand that now Ben can't take him down because his can't legs hold are on slippery yeah, yeah exactly I had to actually google it to find out that Vaseline is illegal you've only got allowed, you're only allowed to put it on cuts apparently you can't put right. it anywhere else because only for, yeah face yeah. only right yeah I have no idea completely so, but it, it, lost on me. it was fun though because the next round happens and we get to watch Ben try to like tackle a greased watermelon, which is funny. <laughs> right. So. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> oh, okay. So then that round ends. He's still not doing very well. And then round three starts. Michael, it, the Venom, hero of the goddamn story, right? Because he's the mm. only one punching Ben in the face consistently. <laughs> 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 Fucking Vaseline or no. But the fight ends. Michael really kind of cleans his fucking clock in the third round because, you know, he's got his his Vaseline cheat going. He's punching sliders. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. But we have to go to a judge's decision. Based on what we saw, Michael very clearly won. I don't know why this was a split decision. But, you know, well, I don't know. Anyway, the, but they do ultimately declare that Michael was the winner because we're not quite done with the movie yet. So the sad music plays, <laughs> even though the hero won. Yeah, and Ben looks both like confused and crestfallen, as if he didn't realize he could lose a fight in a film he's written. He looks genuinely <laughs> like, why, why did I lose? It's like, you wrote this. And I did enjoy that this is the first time Dad showed up and he noticed. So he looks over and Dad's there the first time ever. And Dad's like, see, this is why I wasn't going to show up. You lose everything. You're the worst. You see how this backfired? <laughs> I love Luke more. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, so Mopey Ben goes back to the locker room after his loss. And the guy that he beat in the first round of the tournament is there waiting to beat the fuck out of him. And I'm like, OK, well, maybe this guy's the hero. Uh <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Why does he beat? He beats Ben up for Ben having beaten him up in a tournament. And if, right. If Ben's already beaten you at once, he could probably do it again. Like he's demonstrated he's capable of beating you up. It's it's a ballsy move to then go after him again. Yeah, right. <laughs> but as he's getting his ass kicked by this guy, dad runs in to stop him. Now, I love this shit because John Schneider clearly said, okay, well, I get to kick at least one guy's ass, right? And they're like, well, <laughs> these characters are all like MMA fighters that have been training and are in immaculate shape. He's like, okay, so one of them will probably have to sucker punch me to take me down, huh? And they're like, yeah, fine, man. <laughs> yeah, fine. And so what ends up happening is the dad takes on two MMA fighters, basically, and comes out okay, which just sends the message that MMA fighters aren't all that. <laughs> You've got to send an average middle-aged man. You can take out two MMA fighters. It un totally undercuts the whole thing. It's that old man strength. No, that's it. That's it. Yeah, exactly. He's 59, <laughs> so he's got all of the old man strength. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, God. So, yeah. And so now John Schneider is li uh, laying on top of Ben and they're both getting kicked and punched in slow motion. And I'm like, all right. And credits. <laughs> credits? <laughs> that would have been an amazing ending. <laughs> right? <laughs> it was just like, Matt, see, the one time I do something with you, we both lose. We got beat up. You're the worst. <laughs> credits. credits. <laughs> But no, dad and Ben go home all beat up and shitty. There's there's this great moment where mom's like, oh, does it hurt? And he's like, yeah, it fucking hurts. <laughs> Look at us. <laughs> 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 but yeah, so so mom like starts nursing dad's cuts and, and bruises and shit. And then Ben gets mad, I think because she's paying more attention to dad than she's paying to him. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I couldn't tell why he left, whether it was that or whether he was meant to be getting something for his dad. But if he was, I assume he'd gone to get something to help his dad, but then get sidetracked by things that are all about him yet again, leaving his loved ones to be harmed while he just focuses on his own personal pain. Okay. Yeah, that tracks. Right. No, that makes mm. more, that makes more sense. Yeah. That's, I mean, that's what happens. He goes off and <laughs> it's so stupid and like screenwriting 101, but even worse. He goes and he sees an old tape, like a home movie tape 
Mm-hmm. That's, it basically says, like, Ben being loved even though he sucks. Christmas 95 <laughs> on his side. Yeah. And he watches that and he learns that maybe dad and mom actually do love me. Right. Even yeah. though I suck. But how did he not know those tapes existed? Did he not remember at the time the camera being around? So even Ben as a child was a fucking idiot. He never spotted that his parents kept filming him on all this stuff. Right. And he's never <laughs> seen these videos and he doesn't have these memories. Yeah. So it, this is such a bizarre resolution, too, because it means that even the weak ass insufficient reason he did have for punching his brother mid drive was just a weird misperception of a thing that didn't exist. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right? And there's a there's a weird execution to this as well, which which again undercuts it because he's watching a tape that his parents have filmed of him like, you know, being in a fight and stuff. And then the tape midway through while he's watching it, while he's realizing maybe they did love me after all, you hear the static sound and then it goes into like a football match. I thought, right, so clearly they've taped over your, yes, <laughs> your exactly. fighting to, for Luke. Cause oh, we've got to be, we've run out of tapes for Luke's matches. Well, just go over a Ben one. It's absolutely fine. <laughs> it's just mom and dad fucking and talking about how shitty Ben is. <laughs> so. So yeah, but instead we get the, we, we, he switches tapes and we get the video of those framed gloves that he broke in his breaky scene earlier and his dad. How do you not remember giving those to his dad? He's like, oh, that's where those came from. You gave, you made them and gave them to your dad. <laughs> Did you have the traumatic brain injury? Is that right. what happened here? Yeah. The, you, you, there was a note and in yes, your in hand, right? Well, yeah, actually. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But he has this weird, like, wait, dad did love me moment and then he goes out to try to find the framed gloves that he broke in the breaky scene he does find them it's a miracle they're right where he where he fucking left them what <laughs> what did he think he was breaking right yes, if, if, exactly. if they've got such significance what did he think he was breaking at the time <laughs> and what he says i can't believe it i'm like what can't you believe that's where you threw them <laughs> so okay but we're all, the movie's almost over, so Ben has to wander off and make things right with God. So it's time for this amazing actor to give us his Oscar moment. <laughs> God, the director's like, all right, well, he's real bad at regular talking. Maybe crying is the acting wheelhouse of this guy? Oh, my God. No, it's God. not. Whoo! Yeah, he's like, Jesus, please forgive me. I so wanted Jesus to show up and be like, you killed your brothers. What you were in a mm. snit. It was over a snit. Yeah. You piece of shit. I know forgiveness is kind of my thing, but whoa. No. <laughs> I need some right. time. In his prayer, he's saying to God, you know, I saw what you did to Luke, i.e. take half his head, I assume. Mm-hmm. And I saw what you did for Ashley and her dancing career. So I-, I wonder what you can do for me. It's like God has caused all of this if you believe their thing. Right. right. So Luke's got half a head because of God and Ashley will never walk in. And also, you never mentioned Rebecca. He did do something to Rebecca. <laughs> Rebecca's not around anymore. <laughs> and I think the implication of this scene is meant to be, I think, that all of this time, Ben has been trying to fight God when what he should have been doing is trying to pull God to the ground and then punching the fuck out of his face. And then he gives it. <laughs> Hey, no, would you got to touch your uh, touch your leg with a foreskin? Is what that that's that's what'll do the trick. He actually says. Why do you love me, God? Yes. During this moment. Uh-huh. And I uh, I wanted God to just like come into the frame and be like, uh, leading the witness, I reject the premise. That's not. <laughs> no. All right, but so so but now that Ben's made good with, with God, he goes in to make things right with his dad. <laughs> he goes, Dad, I have a monologue, and John Schneider's like, I'll be damned, I have a monologue, okay? It's like, oh, okay, you're okay, sure, sure. And this is that that great bit where the relationship pays off all this time. He's not been giving his dad a chance and maybe his dad loves him after all. He's like, and his dad's thing is basically, you know, I, it might seem like I don't love you, but it's because I've never really liked you very much. Yes, <laughs> I, I've best. never really related to you. <laughs> He's like, Wait, so you, think, you think it's favoritism? It's not favoritism. I, I just enjoy my relationship with Luke better. Right. Um, he's, he's like, I don't, you know, I don't get you. I don't, under, you're weird. You're weird is what it is. <laughs> <laughs> Luke's a pleasing human being. Uh, you are also my son. I'm doing really badly at this. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know why I would have this speech at the end. There's also a line he says to him. He says, uh, I don't care if you're an MMA fighter, a soccer player, or a clown. And I thought that grouping feels offensive, but I can't tell to which profession. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah, but the, he's like, he gives him the whole, it's okay, I love you by default speech. Right. And that's a good thing to them. That's because that, that's Christianity. Mm, true. Yeah. Yeah, right. No, that that resolves the relationship. We're done fixing that now. I love you despite how shitty you are that I created I'm God. Like, and that's the religion. Yeah. Actually, that makes a lot of fucking sense. <laughs> so, okay. So now dad's down at the gym relating to Ben about his MMA fighting. Now, so I know that the what's supposed to happen here is the relationship has been resolved. And now that they, they love each other, et cetera, and are getting to know each other. But what it, what it plays like is dad was all in on the one son when it looked like he would have an athletic career. And now it, that it's obvious that isn't going to happen, he just switched over to his spare. Yeah, it's why, you, it's why you have two sons. You keep one in reserve just in case. Oh, yeah, right, right. The heir and the spare. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you, keep, you, keep the rap, you keep the wrapping on just in case. Yeah. <laughs> So, yeah, and, and so he's, you know, he's punching. He's like, you know, hey, I get to punch some more stuff before it's over. And they're like, yes, John Schneider, you get to punch more stuff before it's over. So we get him working the heavy bag and they're like, hey, he's like, hey, did you box in the past? And he's like, yeah, they used to call me genetically superior to everyone else. Like, what was that little weird eugenics nickname that he had? Yeah. Well, it was so weird. He said, you know, they call me superior athlete. And I thought, you now sing your superior athlete to Ben. That's what got Luke punched. So just be careful. Because <laughs> I just wondered, like, Ben punches him, leaves him in a coma. But yeah, then his dad <laughs> says, you know, call me genetic superior. And it sounds super eugenics -y, like he's about to get out some calipers and start measuring craniums, which would be <laughs> really insensitive to Luke. Like, really insensitive to Luke. <laughs> There's way too much connection with that. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Dad is actually saying like, oh, my boxing name would be Dave Genetic Superior Bernard. Like literally, <laughs> that's the line though. Like, yeah. We hear uh -huh. that. Yeah, it is. And I was like, wow. Okay. You know what? They actually found a boxing nickname worse than the favorite. My dad loves me in his own way. <laughs> <Bernard>. <laughs> And then the boss comes out and he's like, hey, I got good news. They're overturning the judge's decision because Michael cheated with all that KY jelly lather. There's going to be a rematch. And they're like, are you sure we've got time in the movie for a rematch? It's just, there's like six minutes of runtime. <laughs> also, I'm pretty sure the cheater doesn't get a do over. No, why would he get another fucking fight? I don't think he, get, he gets to do it again. <laughs> So, okay, but Luke isn't quite over Ben killing his fiance yet. So we have to go resolve that, right? He goes to his brother and he's like, hey, look, I, there's there's not enough time in this movie for a whole hell of a lot in resolution. Can you just forgive me because you're Christian? And he's like, "I if we dr drove to a park, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. And then they go to a park and <laughs> fucking Luke is nice about it. He's like, mm. oh, you having a bad day? Your girlfriend's kind of mad at you. That that sounds rough. My fiance's dead. It's it, it, it. We're both having bad days, I guess. Uh, even. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, and and then they go to the bar together. Like he's like, oh, you know what? I also I found you a love interest. She's got a lot of tattoos. Seems like she puts out. It definitely felt like he was trying to set Luke up with a bartender. It a hundred percent felt like that. It is. I wasn't just the only one who got that vibe from this, right? No, no. I I, I honestly thought like that the movie was actually surprised that they didn't hit it off, right? Yeah, yeah. I like the bartender. I mean, yeah. the bet is really weird, but I like right, yeah, it her. Make a whole hell out of sense. She's a weird trophy collector, but you know, yeah. she had some stuff going on. <laughs> but yeah, but they go to the bar and he's like, uh, hey, this is uh, Julia. She's We have a weird bet. I don't know if I just won or lost, but something happened there. We all throw the chips in the air now. We <laughs> I don't know. What, <laughs> Whatever lands we inside both the circle. Lose, win? <laughs> what? Yeah. But then Ashley shows up and Ashley apparently isn't talking to Ben because of all of the her best friend killing and ankle shattering that he did. Yeah, but the way Ben reacts to Ashley turning up is as if she'd found him fucking the bartender over the bar. That's the, that's the way he, he runs this scene. Like he's like, yeah, terribly embarrassed <laughs> and, like, and shocked to be caught with her. It's like, You're just in a bar talking. It's fine. You don't you don't know how to react to you. So she's like, oh, I don't want to see you. So she turns around to leave and he goes, I, I, I've i changed, though. I, I said, I'm sorry to my driveway. You should you should please. <laughs> and then she stops and, and she's like, you know, OK, you know, it's it's time for your big moment, time for your big line. You know, like, you know, you're had me at hello moment. And he goes, I want you, Ashley. And she's like, really, that's the fucking line. That's, okay. that's what you had. But Noah delivered it way too well just now. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Way <laughs> too well. 
So you remember at the beginning of the music when it was like Dawson's Creek being done by Ace of Bass, but they're not native English speakers either, so they're having trouble. He manages to have like 12 different weird commas and wrong italics in I love you, Ashley, or whatever the mm. fuck the line was. It's so rough. <laughs> yeah, it's it's absolutely all, all over the place. I changed. I want you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> ah, it's great because he tells that, and she says she hates him. And I thought, yes, yes, Ashley, I'm on your side now. <laughs> and credits. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Oh, okay. and then we we have to resolve the fucking Barracuda, the the car that they've been fixing up. So, oh right, yeah, no, they they tie the movie together, right? Here. Right, yeah, exactly. It all Good. works out in the end. So yeah, and so apparently, Dad and Ben have been working on the car without Luke knowing it, so that when he goes to work on a car, it'll already be fixed. And I'm like, wait, isn't isn't the fun of rebuilding a car rebuilding the car? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> But apparently not. It's like, I bought you a puzzle and assembled it. Here you go. <laughs> <laughs> what? You got me a finished puzzle? <laughs> I got you Spider-Man Miles Morales. It's a 100%. There you go. <laughs> and again, there's just a very fun little moment of how bad Ben is at rolling with whatever's happening. They finish the car. Dad goes to do a high five. Ben just stands there frozen, uncertain what to do because clearly this yes. wasn't in the script. So then the dad tries to improvise, moving like, ah, too slow. And Ben goes, I, I didn't even try. It's like, yeah, that was the point. You were meant to try, you fucking idiot. It's so weird. The movie's encapsulated so goddamn well in this tiny little moment. Yeah, exactly. Oh, oh God. it takes a lot for me to feel sorry for John Schneider, but in that moment, whoo. God, it's like an empty template for a bad movie. That's what yes. we're watching. <laughs> right. But worse, because they filled some of it in with shitty, stupid movie parts. <laughs> yeah, I got you this template for a movie, but I've completed some of it. <laughs> <laughs> I also published it. It's done. Yeah, yeah. you can't you can edit it. <laughs> All right, so so now we got Ben getting ready for his final fight. Ashley shows up. She's like, oh, you know what? The movie's almost over. I have to forgive you. And I was like, you do? Awesome. Yeah. She's like, maybe he's changed from his violent ways. I'll go and check if that's true by watching him do an MMA fight. Yeah. <laughs> that, that'll tell me if he's learned to control his violence. All right, so now we get the, the big fight because, you know, he got caught cheating, so it's time for the rematch. <laughs> we get a little Christian <laughs> rock rocking out. Ben is so serious about this fight that he walks in slow motion style. <laughs> okay. The movie was supposed to be about the actor playing Ben, who is actually Luke in real life. But the movie is about Ben winning a local MMA fight. It's yeah. not even about Luke anymore. Right, right. And Ben is not even a person that exists in the real world. That's how based on a true story yeah. this is. He accidentally wrote himself out of his own story. <laughs> <He> did. <laughs> So, all right, so it's time for the fight with Michael. Now, I love the way this fight goes because he, he clearly, he knows that the bad guy, he doesn't know he's the bad guy of the movie, right? He thinks the rival is. So he knows that the bad guy should cheat, but they overdo it. So like the entire fight, this guy's like gouging his eyes, kicking him in the nuts, ripping out his fingernails, <laughs> fucking blackmailing him. It's just, it's insane. <laughs> I really wanted Venom to just get disqualified and that was like the the, the, the climax of the film. But no, three counts. You're out, Ben. Ben, you win by default. <laughs> the end. Yeah, it's so, like uh, your relationship uh. with your dad. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so yeah, but what well, maybe he would have if the rounds were longer than 18 goddamn seconds. <laughs> So, yeah, so we, we finish up round one. We go out for round two immediately, kicks him in the nuts, and which I love because I love watching this character get kicked in the nuts. So he really needs to <laughs> get kicked in the nuts a lot. Mm. But he's not fighting very good, damn it. He needs a pep talk from dad. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? Absolutely. Even in the world universe of this movie, knows absolutely nothing about MMA. That's correct. <laughs> yeah, that's true. And dad says, you can do this. And that's my entire <laughs> yep, speech. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He's like, there's, I, I would give you a longer speech, but there's 90 seconds left in this goddamn movie. So you, you can do it. And he's like, I can do it. So they go out for round three and he's bobbing and he's weaving and he, 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 he's a totally different fighter now. Oh, and of course, we have to have Luke do something uh, uh, during this fight. So once Michael gets on top of him and starts ground and pounding, Luke starts the favorite 
favorite <laughs> chant just so that we can be reminded how stupid his nickname is. It's such a bad nickname and chant because it's like not exactly the right amount of stuff. Favorite. Story. Favorite. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, that second syllable just gets thrown away every time. Favorite. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I feel like everybody should be chanting. Okay, but still you killed a woman. Okay, <laughs> yeah, right, but still right. you killed a woman. Even if you win, you killed a lady very recently. Your it's fault. Manslaughterer. Manslaughterer. Yeah, right, Man right. right. <laughs> but yeah, but now it, he's getting beat up and the crowd's chanting his name and he's having earlier in the movie flashbacks and that's what it's going to take to get him to, you know, reverse this situation and get his submission. So the crowd goes wild. And the end of this fight You'd have thought you end with a knockout. You end with something dramatic. And their dramatic ending is an arm lock where it literally ends with them lying down and then not moving for a bit. Right. Until it's done. Yeah. It ends with too hard, too hard. Stop. Okay, yeah. stop. <laughs> exactly. I know yes. that's like really how it can happen in MMA, but still. Yeah. You use a knockout here. It's a fucking movie. Yeah, right. exactly. Right, exactly. But yeah, but that's it. The crowd goes wild. He wins the fight and hooray, hooray. The movie's over. But they still have to admit for some reason how not remotely based on a true story this whole thing was. Yes, it's it's based on true story in that most of the characters didn't exist and the ones who did exist were nothing like it and none of this happened to them right. in, that, in this kind of way. <laughs> yes, right. There, there was a car accident, but Luke Benjamin Bernard, who's one guy and doesn't have... A, well, I guess he does have a brother. He's like one of eight children, but doesn't have a brother. Yeah, he's got like three brothers. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck those guys. <laughs> right, yeah, exactly. <laughs> but that guy was in an accident by himself and had injuries similar to the character in this movie. That is the extent to which it is based on a true fucking story. That's correct. And so he was alone in the car and he wrote this film so we can confidently surmise that he punched himself so hard that he crashed. <laughs> 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 then they show this doctor, mm. right? Now, clearly they've told this doctor that they will give him some number of dollars if he uses the word miracle. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And the contract doesn't stipulate where in the sentence he says miracles. <laughs> right, yeah, exactly. He's very clear on that. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's, he throws like nine different qualities. He's like, and when you think about it, you would be tempted to use the word colloquially. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The doctor couches so much that the word miraculous is in a different area code to the start of the sentence. Right, yeah, exactly. <laughs> he even says, he's like, well, yeah, it's, it's, you know, I can count the number of people I've seen heal from an injury this serious on one hand. And I'm like, so it's more than one. <laughs> yeah. Also, you know what I enjoy in a sandwich? Miracle Whip. I'm done. There. <laughs> And I, I looked this up. I actually looked up because he said he had a Glasgow coma score of three. And, you know, you, you can count the number of people who recover from that on one hand. And so I actually looked up the mortality rate for his diagnosis of like the, the dilated pupils and stuff. 80% of people will die. So there was a 20% chance of recovery. But one of the other things that's a factor in recovery is the age of the person involved, the younger, the better. Right. So he was already at the, the younger end of the scale. So higher than that chance of, uh, of recovery. So it was better than a one in five chance. <laughs> that's not a miracle not miracle odds <laughs> that's, no that's more likely than a dice roll better than rolling a one yeah exactly yeah. <laughs> well and then keep in mind there's four movies they didn't make about people who just died right yeah, exactly. like, <laughs> jesus fucking christ but then we, we close on video of the real luke benjamin bernard at the national day of prayer Basically next to Mike Lindell at some of that <laughs> yeah <laughs> right <laughs> yes and even there he's going like I was miraculously healed by God. Now, I know a lot of you guys prayed for stuff that you didn't get. Anyway, so I was, <laughs> but I was fine. I'm fine. That's what matters. I'm fine. And I wrote this entire film within a month of, re of recovering from a traumatic brain injury. Can you believe that? Yeah, yes. 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 No, I, 100%. Very much reads. Can I like give you that. a note? Two months. Try two months. Just, just say what Try two? Yeah. What's the opposite of a humble brag that you do by accident? <laughs> An arrogant looks stupid by accident. Yeah, yeah right. Know. Yeah, that's that's what we closed on. <laughs> and that's it. And that's all. And that's going to do it for a review of the favorite. But it's not going to do it for the episode just yet because we still need to beat our heads against this wall again next week. So Heath, tell us what's on deck. We got Full Court Miracle. Oh, three sporting movies in a row. Wonderful. 
from me. All right. So with that to look forward to, we're going to bring episode 327 to a merciful close. Once again, a huge thanks to Marsh for hanging out with us today. Be sure to check the show notes for links to all the other stuff he does. And a perhaps even huger thanks to all the Patreon donors that help make the show go. If they count yourself among their ranks, you can make a per episode donation at patreon.com slash godawful and thereby earn early access to an ad-free version of every episode. You can also help a ton by leaving a five-star review and by sharing the show on all your various social media platforms. And if you enjoyed this show, be sure to check out our sibling shows, The Scathing Atheist Citation Needed, D&D Minus, and The Skeptocrat, available wherever podcasts live. If you have questions, comments, or cinematic suggestions, you can email godawfulmovies at gmail.com. Legal services for this podcast are provided by the law offices of P. Andrew Torres. Sam Robertson handles our social media. Our theme song was written and performed by Ryan Slot. We have addressed on Mars and all other music was written and performed by our audio engineer, Morgan Clark, and was used with permission. Thanks again for giving us a chunk of your life this week. For Heath Enright and Eli Bosnick, I'm no illusions. Promise to work hard and earn another chunk next week. Until then, we'll leave you with the Breakfast Club close. Princess Diana's family didn't pray enough. No. Neither did Vin Diesel. When it comes down to it. No. Family. Ben went on to have still murdered somebody and ruined his brother's life. <laughs> that needs to be restated. Luke Benjamin Bernard went on to release a 9-11 themed commemorative workout regime. So, <laughs> you know, personal growth. <laughs> That's appropriate. <laughs> yeah. So I went to ground zero today. I did nine, 11, 11 pushups and nine sit-ups and the Patriot. <laughs> yeah. It's uh, it's never forget leg day is what it is. <laughs> <laughs> the preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2021. All rights reserved.